Hey, everybody, what's going on? Today is Thursday. It is July 7th and a uh, shortened week. So, you know, I got to kind of always recalibrate what today's day is. Um, I want to start off by saying to all the great friends out there who watch and listen, especially here on YouTube and on audio podcasts, you know, you guys are the ones that get the pre roll. The guys on radio and on TV, they don't get this little intimate five minutes where we talk about all of our, our great sponsors. And I'll just say this. I really appreciate everybody supporting our sponsors because without your support of them, they then don't support the show. So it's a it's a reciprocal win 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 relationship. And I just don't want to say to everybody, you know, how much I appreciate it. Like Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com is the uh, website, just seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. Look, the Padres are going to be playing the Giants. A lot of people are going to be going into downtown San Diego, uh, going down or coming up. But either way, Seven Mile Casino is only seven minutes south. So if you want great food at Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, if you want really great table games, uh, blackjack, poker, et cetera, in a smoke-free environment, really convenient location, Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. All right. Um, today, Dr. Fry will stop by from iThrive MD, and we're doing another IV lounge this Saturday. Now, I know a lot of you guys have said to me, Saturdays are better than weekdays, so we've moved them to Saturdays. I also know that when you do it one week, like we did last weekend, which was a holiday weekend, a lot of people will say, gosh, I really want to go. That sounds like something I'd like to try out, but you know, I couldn't make it. It was a holiday weekend. Well, we're back this weekend. 858-240-1497, 858-240-1497. Call, make your appointment. We're there Saturday between 12 and 2. We all get to hang out together, drink mimosas, have a nice time, and everybody's getting healthier and, and taking hydration and nutrition directly into their body so it gets absorbed like that. And uh, with today, with everything that's going on, you want to try and stay as healthy as you possibly can. I Thrive MD, 858-240-1497. I'll see you guys there on Saturday. All right. Speaking of uh, other great sponsors, let me start off with uh, our people at West Coast BBQ Shop, westcoastbbqshop.com. This is Brian Bushfield and his family. You should follow these guys on Instagram, oh, by the way, because they put out really, really great videos. The kind of videos that make you go, damn, I want a big green egg. Or, hey, I want to go down to West Coast BBQ Shop and buy some of those beautiful tomahawk steaks that Brian has in the refrigerator. Anything you need for the grilling season, West Coast BBQ Shop, westcoastbbqshop.com. All right, how about Mazda of Escondido? Mazda of Escondido.com. Yeah, we'd love for you to come in and buy a new Mazda product. I brag about how much I love all my Mazda vehicles. I've got three of them. But um, really right now, your used car is worth more than ever before. And Alan, the general manager, has asked me, hey, can you just tell everybody we're paying top dollar for your used car? So if you want to trade it in for a new Mazda, great. But if you just want to sell your used car and take the cash, they'll do the deal right there on the spot for you. Mazda of Escondido, Mazda of Escondido .com. Uh, Hey, new car, possibly new house or buy, sell, whatever the case may be. You need an expert in this industry. That's Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. So if you have questions about, hey, Gary, I'm thinking about maybe putting my house on the market right now, but I feel like I may have missed the rush and I don't feel like I'm going to get today what I might have gotten three months ago. That is absolutely a possibility, but I'm not the expert. Gary is. If you want to talk to Gary about buying something new right now, you're like, hey, Gary, should I be buying something? I mean, can I, can, you know, what am I qualified for? Alex has gone through this process just this past year. I did this with Gary Cooper literally like 20 years ago. And every refinance that I did thereafter was with Gary. And he's helped so many great friends. 858-376-1299. 858-376-1299. All right. Let me talk about Tory Holistics and California Holistics. I think I mentioned this yesterday. Channel 10 did a news story on how California Holistics down in Chula Vista is contributing big, big, big money to the city. In other words, all the taxes on cannabis um, get fed into the city of Chula Vista, and they are loving California Holistics because, man, I'm telling you right now, the money is just flowing from you to California Holistics to the city of Chula Vista as an example, and I'm just telling you right now, there is no better cannabis shop around in San Diego than Tory Holistics in Sorrento Valley California Holistics in Chula Vista. Use our promo code SD Pride to save 20%. That's SD Pride to save 20%. And lastly, speaking of cannabis products, there's a brand that we're in business with, HVGC, Hummer Valley Growers Company. Now, if Tory and California are not convenient for you and use another cannabis shop, just check these guys out by name. Ask for them by name. Former Marines, we all love to support veterans. 
uh, who came home from Afghanistan all screwed up and prescription pills were just making things worse. Cannabis has become their answer. And that's why they're working with UC Irvine doing research. It's why they're working with the federal government to make sure that cannabis is an acceptable form of treatment for PTSD. These guys are doing great work. HVGC, HVGcompany.com, Helmut Valley Growers Company. Support our sponsors. We appreciate all you guys. And let's get on with it. Hey, great friends. What's going on? Today is Thursday. It is July 7th. This is Kaplan and crew coming to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. You want great table games? You want amazing food with Sammy's Restaurant and Bar in a completely smoke-free environment and only seven minutes south of downtown San Diego? Come have some fun at Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Good luck. And those of you that I need to say this to, you got any problems related to gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER because, you know, this is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to take over your life. I encourage you all the time. Have fun, but don't let it take over. All right. Uh, we're just getting rolling. We're just getting on to the airwaves of 1090. We're getting on to the stream of YouTube. We're going to be on television tonight on Channel 4 San Diego, and we're just now going live on all the different audio podcast platforms. So glad to have everybody along. All right. Grande, brown man. I started yesterday's show by saying how much I appreciate all of the great friends out there. But I got to say, I really, really love it when you do two things. Either A, you're rocking our merch somewhere and you've sent us pictures on social media showing us where you are, who you're with, what you're doing, and the merch that you're rocking. That I love. I absolutely adore that. The second thing I really love is that when you are watching the show in particular on television or YouTube, because those are the two places where you actually watch it, radio and audio podcasts is where you listen to it. But I love when people send us pictures or videos of what they're doing. Like, for example, a few weeks ago, Darth Narvaro, who's one of our all-time great listeners, was in Disneyland, and he's holding up his phone watching the podcast on YouTube, and his wife is taking pictures, and he's like, yo, I'm in Disneyland, here's the castle behind me, and I'm watching the show. Yesterday, we got a tweet from a gentleman who was showing us that he was cutting hair, I think, in his barber shop in Yuma, Arizona. And he's watching the show on Channel 4 San Diego. Alex, can you show everybody? Browner, have you seen this? Yeah, man. Shout out to Yuma. I've been to Yuma before. I love I've Yuma. Been, love it. I've, on, I've only been to Yuma, like, driving from San Diego to Phoenix for like soccer tournaments or whatever. That's the only time I've ever really been in Yuma, like to stop midway and go to an in and out or get gas. Like, I don't really know Yuma at all. And it's a great frankly, place to hide. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you hidden out yeah. there before? Maybe. <laughs> well, all I can say is this. I didn't even realize, I guess I probably should have thought about this, that if you have Cox or Spectrum cable and you're in Yuma, Arizona, you get... Channel 4 San Diego. So, Alex, if you could, show everybody this tweet that we received yesterday afternoon. I freaking love this stuff, man. I, I just, you know, you can never get desensitized to it. Here, Here's the, the gentleman. Alex, can you uh, tell us the, the guy's Twitter? Joe the Barber. Joe the Barber underscore. I don't want that to be missed. You know, I don't want you to screw up and go with Joe the Barber. This is Joe love the Barber underscore. underscore. Oh, no, then it's at underscore Joe the Barber underscore. There you Boy, go. Thanks. Get them underscores in there. Why well, y'all don't Boy, like underscores? Thanks. Not only do I not like underscores, I don't like two underscores. I don't like an underscore at the beginning and the end. Like, I don't like one at the beginning, even if it was by itself. I don't like one at the end if it's by itself. And I sure as hell don't like the underscore, the name, then the underscore. But you know who's as bad? Joe... Why? Why? Eric Williams is bad. What is Eric it? has like an underscore it's in the middle of his name. Eric underscore D underscore williams come on eric why did you guys okay can you not find it on the phone <laughs> I, love, I love underscores i think they're great and, it, and it's an easy way to keep your actual name on any platform if you put an underscore you are right that when you do use your phone and you are typing something you have to like go to the numbers right 
And then, then, you the, have and to then go, the symbols. Right. Then you have to go to the, the hashtag, the plus sign, and the equal sign to get to the <laughs> underscore. Because if it's just the numbers, it's like a dash. You know what I mean? But, but whose phone is ringing? Who's got a landline? No, dude. That's, I have the landline. I have forgot to turn my ringer off, man. That's the dentist. Uh, really? That's your cell phone? Yeah. And the dentist is calling you? Yeah. You want to take the call right now and we'll put him on the air? No, nah, I already hung up on him. Oh, you you ignored it. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the middle of I'm doing something. Call him back. Nah, nah. I'm you didn't put him on speakerphone though. I'm trying to confirm an appointment. That's a robot. Okay, what are we what are we gonna do? We're gonna go back in and get some more more work done? Yeah, man. I got this insurance. I got this insurance now. So the insurance has to clear. It did. And so now they're trying to basically take more money and drill more teeth. <laughs> which is pretty much the gist of what they want to do. Mm -hmm. I understand. So. Well, anyway, back to Joe the Barber here for a second. So Joe the Barber, who's got an underscore at the beginning of his handle and at the end of his handle, Joe the Barber is a great friend. And so, Alex, if you could go back to the tweet here for one quick second. Joe the Barber says uh, on the screen, on his in his Twitter, he says, uh, just a couple of San Diegans in Yuma, Arizona, listening to at Kaplan and crew. Shout out to Scott Kaplan, to Alex Padilla, to Browner's podcast. Hashtag Barber, hashtag Fade, hashtag Sports, hashtag Yuma. <laughs> and the best part of it is, is that he shows you the video of Joe the Barber doing work. So, like, think about it. They're like, hey, we got to produce a live show. No one's going to be listening because it's 4th of July. Let's throw a big stills on there. So, oh dude. god big sales <laughs> oh that whole thing oh man oh my god yesterday oh. we had this whole conversation i don't even remember where it started but <laughs> i think i think what it was was uh, our friend jt the brick not the feeling you guy browner but jt the brick was hosting the the jim rome show and yeah. so as a result when jim comes on the air from 12 to 3 on on 1090 we come on the air at 3 on 1090 and it's great to have jim on the station and it's great to have jt the brick filling in for jim rome but i was told that big sills was filling in for rome because big sills had put it on his social media but then you guys were saying no 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 if big sills were on 1090 filling in for rome he'd blow this thing up on social media which he did not do right. here's what i found out and i don't mean to knock big sills at all but the poor guy like once you've got one of these reputations Big Sills, uh, CBS Sports Network started off by saying, no, 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 no. We don't want Big Sills on CBS Sports Network filling in for Rome. So they blew it out on TV. I guess they were going to do something else. Then the radio guys got a hold of it, and they were like, no, nah, we don't want Big Sills either. And I feel bad for the guy. I'm not joking around. I actually feel bad for him. You know. So CBS Sports Radio and CBS uh, Television, CBS Network, they both blew Big Sills out, and he wound up not hosting the show apparently. At least that's what I was told from reliable sources so that's unfortunate alex alex do you feel like we should go out to see joe the barber should we make like a, a run out to yuma and i mean your hair is looking very tight today have you just recently gotten a fresh cut yeah i think friday last friday so almost a week ago mm -hmm. yeah i got my grill um i'm down i mean i don't want to go to yuma just to get a haircut but if there is a, ever a road trip that ensues to Arizona, fireworks, baby, we're one hundred percent stopping at Joe's. Even if I don't need one, you can line me up real quick in the back. You always need a a quick neck trim. Joe, you cut Brown, the brother's hair. And I got. I listen. I got to get some clarification. If Joe cut the brother's hair, then yeah, I'll stop by on my way to Arizona if I'm trying to hide out. Now I got a barber in the hideout. If Alex goes back to that video one more time and he shows it to you, look at look at the fade that Joe is making here. Look at the artistry of Joe the Barber. Hair though, Scott. I know, but yeah. come on. He's he, this is this is high and tight, man. This you that that you cut the brother's hair right there, no problem. Nah, that guy's half know, a brother man. right there. I don't know. That looks like a Mexican guy to me. I don't know. What do you think, Alex? It's not a black guy. <laughs> <laughs> light skin brother, man. What light skinned brother? Come on. No. I don't know about that, my man. No. Like I'm know. a light skinned brother. Come on. No. You Brown, are a white Brown has man, a valid so. point. It's different hair, man. Different it's hair. different hair, different styles, different blends, different. It's different, man. It's different. It's different. I think Every, the question you know. is, does Joe wax widow's peaks? That's the question. 
That's the main question. <laughs> That's the question. If Joe waxes Widow Peaks, then we will do a road trip tomorrow. We'll do the show from we, we there. Arizona. We there. We got to take his Wi Fi out. Yeah. You know what I was thinking about, though, is that um, I, I mentioned this yesterday uh, how much I, I just love all of our great friends and I love our communication. You know, when we're on YouTube, we're all in the YouTube chat. We're all going at it. We're all talking about different stuff. And I love that. You know, when you go onto social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, cited, when you go into all these different platforms, we get to communicate there. Um, you know what I was thinking about for tomorrow's show? Cause tomorrow's Friday. And, uh, uh -oh. Alex, I know you don't, I know you don't love this. I'm out, but you're out. Yeah. You're out. Oh. You're, you're, not, you're not even gonna let me say what I want to say. You're out already. I'm out. I already know what's coming. Tell me, Brown. You want to do a, a community Zoom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do. I do. Yeah. He hates those. I know. Why do Why you, you just so host your own? <laughs> 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 you miss people that much? Uh, yeah, so much. <laughs> we've been, we've been doing oh events with God. the great friends like all for like the last three months. You just yeah. tired, tired of seeing him. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 I didn't see Tommy anymore. I'm good. Oh, That's dude. It. Tommy yesterday. Tommy, You'll Tommy, see him Saturday. I should have gotten these pictures for you guys. Tommy, Tommy yesterday was rocking his brown fax t-shirt. Shout right? out. And he is going to like every place he goes to in his daily life. And he'll take a selfie and send it to me. Here I am at Chase Bank. Here I am at the auto parts store. You know, here I am at the bakery. Everywhere he goes, Tommy, Tommy, you are the man. You keep it going. I love when you represent. And if you're going to rock those Kaplan and Crew t-shirts, brown facts, pay that man, whatever t-shirts you've bought from our merch shop, rock them, send the pictures. I need to do a better job oh, of getting Tommy's pictures. Shout out. There you go. Shout out is right. I also need to get Tommy a new sided hat. He's He loves that hat. You know, look at, oldie look but a goodie, Browner. man. Look at Browner's face on Tommy Tommy's chest. That is hot. That is Browner. the face he has every time he sees Tommy Tommy. <laughs> yeah. True. That is hot, Browner. That's very accurate. That is the exact. Isn't that hot to see right your now. face on another dude's body. I, I, did you not see, hear me ignore that the first time you said it? So then you're gonna draw direct attention to. It? I think it's okay. I, I think that's how shirts work. <laughs> Really? You put, you put, you put a put logo on? on their shirt, and now you're on someone's chest. That's kind of how shirts work. So, yeah, it's great. All right. All right. Nothing against uh, it. So, anyway, listen, uh, I just want to say to Joe the Barber how much we love that stuff, man, how much we appreciate it. That's really, really cool. All right. Um, I will tell you this. Just as we're getting rolling today, uh, Alex just mentioned it. Do you miss people that much? This Saturday, we will be at I Thrive MD between 12 and 2 p.m., 1425 Frazee Road in Mission Valley. We will be there on Saturday between 12 and 2. If you want to make an appointment and you want to come hang out, we're going to be there for a two-hour window. We're going to sit there. We're going to drink mimosas. We're going to laugh. We're going to have fun. We're going to do a bunch of social media posting and so on. If you want to be a part of it, come on down. 858-240-1497. 858-240-1497. Make your appointment now. Get your 30% discount. And let's all together get healthier because, um, listen, I just want to make sure that I am staying as far away from COVID as I can because, listen, I know a lot of people that have it. Um, and I have a friend of mine who actually was traveling internationally and she to where? got um, somewhere in Europe. I'm trying to rem I don't remember exactly where she was going, but she got it like along the way. So when she got there, she went into a, a quarantine and then, you know, took a couple of days and then she got her negative test. But I'm just saying that people are out there with it. It's moving around. It's not going away anytime soon. I'm going to I Thrive. I want that immune boost. And uh, I'm looking for a little recovery boost this weekend as well. So I Thrive MD will be there. Uh, Alex, will you remember it this weekend? Know, will you dude. put it on your calendar? <laughs> are you planning on coming? What's your deal? Listen, I don't have a calendar. Um, I, I've, I'll put an alarm. How about that? And but you don't use a calendar? No. For That's, reals? No. Interesting. Browner, do you use a calendar? Yeah, I have to. I can't even remember people's names. Dude, I, I live my life on my calendar. Up until Saturday, I, I never had an issue. 
Yeah. You know, no, man. So like, it's happening like, I'll tell you. you right now. Yeah. I'll tell you right now. I used to, I started out with the Apple calendar on my phone. Mm-hmm. The one that's like standard. Mm-hmm. Right. I've that's what had, I use. I use. No, I don't use that anymore. I use the Google calendar because it's all connected with my different Google email accounts. Mm-hmm. So I, and I'm, I'm not joking, man. I legitimately live by the calendar. If I miss something, if somebody called me and said, Hey, I thought we had an appointment. We were going to get together at this day at this time. I'd be like, Oh, well, it's not on my calendar. Mm-hmm. If it's on my calendar, you can count on me. I will be there. Right. If it's not on my calendar, doesn't exist. I don't have a calendar. Never had had a calendar. And up until Saturday, I've never missed anything or been late to anything. You know, man, but that's I'm the doing, first time. It's like 99.9% ac- per- accurate. So I'm, I'm good. Don't I got, I, and I know, and I know exactly everything I have booked right now in my head. I, I, I know everything. I know, I know what I got to do. I know that is the dates. Old server, I know dates. That's the server brain right there. The concerts that I got. I know dates to weddings. I know dates to my wedding. I know dates for bachelor oh, parties. Man. I know you should know the date to your wedding. That's that's not well, not just time. my wedding, but like weddings that I have. I'm or do I'm officiating another one. Do you remember because these things are part of your routine, or do you remember because you just have a good memory? I don't. I don't know. I don't think I have a fantastic memory, but because if things are in routine, like you can, you won't forget them because you do them in routine. And so things that are in that window, your memory can always be jogging. So you can always get it. I don't really do a lot of routines, so I forget all types of stuff. So I have to have a calendar. Yeah, me too. I mean, like, I'm just looking at my calendar right now, you know, and I've got a bunch of stuff going like tomorrow, you know, I'm just looking at my calendar of the meetings I have and uh, zooms that I have. And then you hear just for example, Saturday, I can see Saturday. It's it's my a friend of mine's birthday, so I've got his his birthday on my calendar. I've got the I Thrive uh, thing on the calendar. Is on the, Sunday, is the band in your is the band in your calendar for Friday? Good question. Answers no. I Uh-oh. did get a call yesterday. No, no, but I, I don't need that on Friday. I, I only because I just know that when I get off the air on Friday, like I'm hooking up with Rachel and we've already got plans. I actually mentioned yesterday April and the Funk Junkies playing this Friday night at the Kraken. And I, mm-hmm. and, you know, John, based on this conversation that we had yesterday about this and Alex, you said to me, gosh, how many people do you know? How many friends do you have? How do you make it to all these different things? Um, April heard this all play out on the radio yesterday <laughs> and she nice. called me and she was like, thank you so much for mentioning us. But I actually got a, a message from a great friend yesterday afternoon who said, Hey, you're talking about this place, the shanty in Cardiff that you like to go to. You're talking about the Kraken on Friday night. And this, this, this is Anthony, one of our great friends. He said, why don't you invite Idol? everybody? Not Anthony Idol, not Anthony. Oh. Idol. This is different Anthony. You've met this Anthony before. Uh, this is Anthony Motisi. Uh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Anthony Shut said up. to me, he said, why don't you like tell people where you're going to be and invite people? So I just want to say one thing. Alex, you mentioned, do you miss people that much? <laughs> <laughs> Danger zone now. I'm inviting both of you guys to Browner's favorite spot in North County, the Crankin' in Cardiff on Friday night. My friend April is playing her band. April and the Funk Junkies is playing this Friday night, 930. I've never really done this before. This is not some radio station appearance. This is not like the show being paid to be somewhere. I am going to just say it. Friday night, 930, April and the Funk Junkies, Crankin', Cardiff. You guys want to come join me? Love to see everybody there. We'll have a beer. We'll have a good time. We'll listen to some good music. We'll dance. We'll have a great life. You know what I'm saying? Alex, any chance you can get Mar to Cardiff Ooh. on Friday Ooh. night? Uh, no. Why? Why it's not? date night. It's not date night tomorrow. It, Why? She, she's doing a girls' night. I don't know what she's doing, though. Bring them. Oh, em. even better. Yeah. Right. And, Women Brown empowerment. There's a female band. What are you doing? Dude, bring the girls. Yeah. Yeah, probably not happening, but. Okay, well, now wait. Time out then. If. If Mar and the girls have a girls' night, mm-hmm. why don't you come up and hang out with us? You can catch me at Petco tomorrow. <laughs> oh, you're going to the game tomorrow night? Yeah. Okay. Browner? What? Very... What's so funny? I, listen, listen, Petco Park, listen, that's legit. I may not have a calendar, but I, I got things lined up already. I got things to do, man. And he Shut knows, out, and he knows what he's got, got to go. Yeah, he knows out, what man. he's got lined up. Shut okay. out. I respect uh, that. So how about, how about you, Brown? I know you love it. How about you, man? What? 
come on up tomorrow night. That's the plan. I told you yesterday. I had to, you know, do some mental gymnastics to kind of see where my schedule would line up. I'm almost there. So, yeah, I'm planning on it. Put it on your calendar, dog. Do you have a see, digital now, I... calendar or do you have like a diary calendar? Me? Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's a great question. No, it's all in here. And now because I got this new fancy computer, it's all in there. And it's all in this. So if I miss something that's in there, I just didn't want to go. Okay, got it. <laughs> uh, t- I'll just listen. Tomorrow nice. night, anybody wants to come join us? 9.30 tomorrow night, April and the Funk Junkies, the Crankin' in Cardiff. I'll be there. Browner will be there. This is yeah. not like some show event. This is not something that we're paid for an appearance. Right. They're not sponsors on the show. This is just real life. You want to just come hang out and just be bros? I'm in. That's all I'm saying. What about do it? What about women? Yeah, ladies too. Oh, Rachel's going to be there. And like, I'm sure she'll have a bunch of friends there. It'll be, listen, it's going to be packed tomorrow night. And I just want to pack the place because I really want, Ra- I, I, I want April to, uh, you know, I want them to see that she brings in a crowd. So if you want to come hang out with us tomorrow night, that's where we're going to be. All right, listen, we're just getting going. What I want to talk about next is this. Tonight, the Padres and the Giants. It's not the game I want to talk about. It's the Hall of Fame induction, inductions that I want to oh. talk about. Who's going into the Padre Hall of Fame? I want to talk about this next. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios here on. All right, great friends. What's happening? It is a Thursday afternoon. This is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. And yeah, we come to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. Okay, so guys, I mentioned this at the end of the first segment. I want to jump right into it now. Tonight, when the Padres play the Giants and they start this four-game series, and by the way, um, Alex, if you put up the standings in the National League West, this is a – and Browner, I don't want to overstate this because yesterday I know I got a lot of people on social media saying, dude, calm down. It's still only July, and I was talking about this whole Manny Machado thing yesterday. But I really think this series against San Francisco is a monster, monster series. San Francisco is 10 and a half games back of the Dodgers. They're trying to crawl back into this thing. Padres are now six games behind the Dodgers. And the Dodgers just got done sweeping Colorado last night. So if you're the Giants, it's a huge series for you because you're trying to crawl back in. If you're the Padres, it is a monster series because of the way things have gone in the last, like, 14, 15 games. Alex, you'll have to give me the exact numbers, but I said yesterday, I think they, they've lost eight of their last 10 and 12 of their last 14. So the Padres got to get it's nine right. of their last 12. Nine of their last 12? Okay. All right. So the Padres got to get themselves right. And when you lose to the Dodgers three out of four, and then you come home and you lose two straight to Seattle, and now you get an off day – Hopefully everybody got a chance to rest, recover, relax, whatever, get your head on straight because I'll tell you right now, um, you got to win this series. A split, no blood, but I don't know how you guys feel about this. You got to win this series. You're at home. You're playing a division rival. They're four and a half games behind you. You're six games behind the Dodgers who are now surging. You got to win this series. What do you guys think? Yeah, I agree. It's not just necessarily the current standings. I think it's momentum going into the All-Star break. I think it's way too much familiarity to 2021 season. The Giants are not playing well either. You just swept them in San Francisco last time you played them. You have Joe Musgrove on the mound tonight to start it off. I think that it is a very, very, very important series for momentum. Now, you, everybody here can be like, well, they can go get swept and then and then win their final five and then go to the all-star break on a five game winning streak. And you're right. But beating Colorado and beating Arizona is not beating the Dodgers and not beating the giants. Big difference. We've seen the difference here already. We've seen how they play against good teams. We've seen how they play against bad teams. It is an important series. It's not make or break, but it is important for momentum going into the, All-Star when break. you need to win, it doesn't matter who you beat. Now I agree. We're on the same page. This is a very important series for them to, be aggressive. I think it's great. Joe Musgrove is the starting pitcher for tonight. Because as the team leader, as the staff leader, you need him to set the tone for the series. If you're going to pay that man, 
here we are again and back to back starts now where he needs to come through. Okay. Well, let's so just I'm go saying. back here. Uh, two starts ago, Joe Musgrove was coming out of COVID. Didn't pitch particularly well. It was mm -hmm. his first really mm -hmm. kind of poor performance of the year. Uh -huh. And then in his most recent outing against the Dodgers, and Joe Musgrove did what you are supposed to do as a starting pitcher to win games. And as I recall, the numbers were like seven innings pitched and 10 strikeouts. And I think he maybe even three gave runs. up, was it three runs? Yeah. But the offense scored a grand total of one. And so they squandered Musgrove's performance on Friday night, or was it Thursday night of last Thursday. week? Thursday. And then, and then they squandered the next great performance, which was Blake Snell, who can't buy a win. And he had 12 strikeouts. And so the, the, the starting pitching was not the reason why the Padres lost at the Dodgers. But your point is made, Browner. If Joe Musgrove is the leader of the team and of the pitching staff, and you're pitching at home against a division rival who's four and a half games behind you and they're not playing well, yeah, you need a stopper. Tonight, Joe Musgrove has to be that guy. But let's really zero in on what the Padres need to do this weekend. Score more than one run. Score a Good run. Start. You know? Like, if Joe goes seven, ten strikeouts, three and runs, and the Padres score one run, then it doesn't really matter. If Blake Snell goes five innings, 12 strikeouts, one earn, one earn run, it doesn't really matter if the Padres can't score. The Padres offense is the problem here. They need to step up. We need to see some some clutch hitting when they get they get a lot of hits. They get a lot yeah, of walks. I was just about to say that. They get a lot yeah. of people on base. And but the problem that. is that the Padres get them in bunches. They'll go out and they might have a game this weekend where they score 10. And then the rest of the three games, it might be like two or one. So the Padres need to consistently score runs to take some pressure off the staff, who has not been as excellent as they were to start the season. But when you struggle to score, consistency is usually the main issue. Like It's not that they can't hit because they've shown that they can hit. Against good teams, they've shown that they can hit. They haven't shown that they can consistently hit. Yeah. And so I think that's a sign that not necessarily of them not being able to sustain hitting they just ha don't have the guys to do it because manny's been consistent eric hosmer had well, a no, large no, chunk no, no, where no, he no. performed manny, manny was manny was consistent before his injury is he hurt what do you think what do you think is he in uniform what do you think well i think that um then you're going to talk about it what do you think i think that uh you know, the, the only day that I'm healthy is the first day of spring training. Every day after spring training, I'm not 100%. What do you think? Well, there you go. There you go. What do you there think? There you go. I mean, you're going to talk about it. You do it. I knew you yesterday. I, I knew exactly what was going to happen yesterday, too. Once I started hammered? ripping Manny. Once I started ripping Manny for, for being such a jerk, you know, <laughs> everybody's like, oh, dude, I understand where he's coming from. He's in pain and he's annoyed and the team's not playing well. And I just know the way it goes. Fans love their players. They hate the critics of the players. I've been on the radio in San Diego 20 years. I don't give a flying you know what. Ooh, I got okay? else is coming. Yeah, no, no, no. I wouldn't do that. But my point is, is that I told you the way I felt about Manny Machado yesterday and his, in my opinion, his entertaining but arrogant position yesterday in the postgame, you know, press conference. Well, post-game media scrum in, in, in the locker room. So I knew what was going to happen. Half the people were like, finally, somebody telling it like it is. And the other half of the people were like, screw you. He's our guy, blah, blah, blah. Listen, I want Manny Machado to succeed like everybody else wants Manny Machado to succeed. But the fact of the matter is, and Heath Bell laid it out perfectly yesterday, once Manny Machado got hurt, you can see how offensively, how weak the Padres are. So, look, that's not really what and I want to talk Manny Machado is a very important piece to this weekend, too. If Manny Machado is still struggling, then the team's going to struggle. That's, yes. not a, that's not a take. That's just a fact. Yes. Like if, when yes. Manny Machado struggles, the team struggles. So if he continues to struggle, it might be a long weekend. Well, let me talk about something else related to tonight's game, though, because the game is at 640. But the Padres have suggested to fans to be in their seats by 620. I'm going to explain why in just one second. But before I do, What's going on I just in your want house to send today? a shout. 
What's going on in my house? Yeah, did you like getting your Barry White on? Like, what's up with the romantic lighting today? Yeah. You nothing baby. different, dude. Am I looking really dark today? Around, baby. Yeah, I'm trying to set I'm the looking, mood. It's a Thursday. Super dark in my dungeon here today. Yeah, you know, I got this. Ooh. I got the bright pink shirt on, and everything else is dark around yeah. me. I want all <laughs> the attention to be on my pink shirt today. Yeah. <laughs> well, this pink shirt, oh. you know, this pink shirt. This is my. These are my friends, Jeff's Beach Burgers. And uh, they're down in the Hawaii I'm going there this weekend, man. Oh, dude, I'm going there tonight. I'm, I'm going. going I'm going to go tonight. My kids want to go tonight and check it out. Does Does it look super dark in my dungeon today? Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah I don't know what the deal is. I, I literally I don't do anything different. I think it. It's when it's cloudy outside. Do. It's yeah dark overcast. Inside. Yeah, I know. All right, I'll open up some some uh, shades here in a little bit. Um, in the meantime, let's all get down and be romantic, Barry White style with my pink shirt on. Yeah. Um, before I get to what I really wanted to talk about, about tonight's game, I do want to just remind everybody uh, about our friends at Mazda of Escondido, Mazda of And I'll just make this real brief and just tell you this. If you have a used car and you're thinking to yourself, why do I have this car? My, I'm in the, this exact situation. You know, I've got these three Mazdas and my kids are all home from college for the summer. And then what's going to happen is, uh, Justin's going to go back to school and he's going to leave a car here, uh, which is the CX five. Then Jillian's going to drive back to Boise in the CX 30. And, um, Jaden's going to go down to Tulane and she's leaving a car, which is fine. Her CX 30, because then Julia's going to get her driver's license and she's going to take over driving Jaden's car. But now I'm sitting here with an extra car. I don't want an extra car. I don't want an extra payment, you know? So I want to sell my Cadillac, but it's leased. But you see, if the lease is, is let's say the payoff is 20000 and the car is worth 30000 I actually want to go sell the car now, pay off the lease, and keep the extra money. I think I told you guys this story. I had a friend of mine who uh, had a Tesla, used Tesla. He had it. I mean, he had it for like three years. The payoff on the lease was like sixty grand. He had a broker sell it for ninety grand. He pocketed thirty, sold it, and went and bought one of those new Rivian electric trucks. Great move. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to take my Cadillac to Mazda of Escondido to see Alan, and I want to sell this vehicle, and I want to pocket the difference. So if you've got a used car right now that you either want to trade in, which means you're going to get top dollar, or perhaps you just want to sell it outright, Mazda of Escondido needs your used cars, and they're paying top dollar. So check them out, Mazda of Escondido, MazdaofEscondido.com. All right, let me get back to why tonight is an important night at the Padres Giants game, because it's not just another baseball game tonight is the um, I'm going to say celebration and I'm going to call it an induction into the Padres hall of fame for what I really think are two Padre legends, Larry Lucchino. Now Browner, we've talked a lot about Padres battle scars. Do you know yes. Larry Lucchino and his story? I don't know him personally, but I, have, I, have, I know the name, yes. All right, let me tell you the story of Larry Lucchino real quick. Give it to me. So when the Padres, this is going back to the late 90s, Larry Lucchino came to the Padres from the Baltimore Orioles. While with the Orioles, he was the guy who really led the construction of, uh, of the new ballpark. I call it new. It's now 20-plus years old, Camden Yards in Baltimore. The Padres went out and got him. John Moores at the time went out and got Larry Lucchino saying, well, if he did it there, he can do it here. The Padres, I think people understand the history, in 1998 went to the World Series against the Yankees, and that really um, that created a sense in the community that there needed to be more support for the Padres, and they needed their own ballpark. Remember, Qualcomm Stadium was just like Three Rivers in Pittsburgh, like Riverfront in Cincinnati, like the Coliseum in Oakland, and like other baseball slash football multi-use stadiums back in the day. The Padres, with all of their success, said to the public, let's build a ballpark downtown. What I don't think any of us knew back then was that when the ballpark would be built, that 15 years later, downtown San Diego would literally grow up around Petco Park. And that has happened. Now, all the things that people were told about how the Padres would be better and they'd be more competitive and they'd be a championship contender and so on, that has not happened. But we are in an era right now where through new ownership and an infusion of dollars, 
we obviously can see that the Padres are spending more than ever before. And I think winning has become more important to the Padres as a franchise than it was back then. Larry Lucchino got Petco Park built. And even after uh, the, the, the studs went in the ground and all the lawsuits and, and everything that happened, it ultimately got done. And really the guy most responsible for leading the charge is Larry Lucchino. And he's, he's always been great to me, even when he left the Padres and he went to the Red Sox where he had even more success as an executive, you know, winning championships. Larry Lucchino has always maintained a home in San Diego. And like I said, my experiences with him, guy's always been great to me. Um, and I know a lot of people have a, a tremendous amount of adoration for Larry Lucchino. So he's going into the Padre Hall of Fame. But perhaps really the bigger name, at least from my perspective, because I'm so close to the situation, Ted Leitner, Uncle freaking Teddy Leitner is being given the respect and the honor that he has earned and deserved as the you know 40 year voice or whatever the number of years was that he was the voice of the Padres. And make no mistake, by the way, through ownership changes and front office changes, Ted Leitner, who will be celebrated by the Padres along the way, was utterly utterly disrespected by previous Padres administrations. Just the facts, man. Okay. Ted, if he, if he wasn't an ambassador to the team and if he really just wanted to get raw, he would tell you all about it. It's not today. It's not Peter Seidler. It, it's not everybody who's at the Padres today. It's the previous administration that was constantly trying to push Ted out. But at least Ted is going to get his due now and is going to go into the, the Padre Hall of Fame. Alex, I know you got some video here uh, to, to, that is going to be celebrating Ted. Can we, can we all watch this together? Yes. Let's take a look at this. Right, deep right field, that's fair, it's gone. And it is going and gone. Home run, Anthony Keith Quinn, 4-2 Padre. You kept the faith, you supported the Padres in the city, and here we are today as a result. Thank you. And the San Diego Padres, that's right, the Padres at the 2005 National League West Championship. Oh, they're just coming out just full speed from the bullpen, from the dugout, bouncing up and down in front of the mound here. And the ultimate team player has just set the ultimate individual relief record in baseball history. How about that? 479 saves for the great Trevor Hoffman of the San Diego Padres. The one-two pitch. Outside corner, strike three called. 500 saves. 500. Count them. Boy, that's a big number up on the scoreboard out there. Man, I'm telling you right now, I, 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 I have goosebumps. I don't know if you guys get the same emotion hearing Ted's voice and seeing some of the all-time great moments, um, I, it, mostly probably because I was standing there. I mean, Ted Leitner in a tuxedo on the on the opening day of Petco Park, I mean, if the camera would have scrolled to the I'm standing right there with Billy Ray. Billy Ray's looking at me going, what are we doing here on the field? I'm like, bro, nobody's stopping us. Nobody's kicking us out. Let's be here. Um, Trevor Hoffman's 479. Trevor Hoffman's 500. I mean, great moments in Padre history. Tony Gwynn's home run against the Yankees in the World Series. I literally have goosebumps all over my arms because, I mean, listen, I, I've told this story a thousand times. I mean, Ted Leitner, when I got to San Diego, I walked up to him at a Charger uh, training camp one day and I said, hey, you're Ted Leitner. He goes, yes, I am. I'm Scott Kaplan. I go, you know, if it wasn't for you blazing trails in San Diego, obnoxious loudmouth like me doesn't get out here. And, um, Man, I, it is so great to see Ted uh, get this honor. So I know what the Padres are asking for, and I'm just going to throw this out there to everybody. If you can get into your seats tonight by by about you know quarter after six, you'll be there for the celebration. So so plan accordingly. Alex, what do you think? I mean, you you've got, I mean, you, you know Ted pretty decently. I do. What do, you, yeah. what do you think about this? Yeah. No, I think it's awesome. I think it's the respect that he deserves. You know, um, my entire Padres up until a few years ago, you know, career not career, but my entire connection to the Padres was 1090. And I did hundreds of Padres games as a board op producer, whatever you want to call it with Ted. And I think it's amazing. I don't know if the, I don't know if the Aztecs have a hall of fame, but he needs to be in that one too. If he's not, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but this, this is going to be great, man. And, and uncle Teddy, it's all these moments that happen at Peco 
you know, you saw the opening, you saw Tony, you've seen Tony Gwynn's retirement, Trevor Hoffman's retirement, the statues unveilings, the nu- the number, you know, all the stuff that he's ever done, like emceeing, it's going to be great for him to be emceed. Right. Like he's been the be MC for all these moments. Now right. he's going to yeah. get a chance to be emceed by somebody. And that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I wish I could be there. And I really do. I wish I could be there. Um, I also think I it's just, like Tatis blanket night. So it's going to be packed. Yeah. I, I just wish I, yeah, I, I wish I could be there. Um, unfortunately I can't make it down there tonight, but, um, I'm so happy for Ted Leitner. I, I'm so grateful for the time that I got with Jerry Coleman and Ted Leitner. Um, I'm grateful for, for the time that I spent with Ted as a colleague, not just, you know, as 1090 having the Padres, but, you know, Ted did a lot of talk radio for us back in the early days of 1090. And, um, you know, like I said, the other day, you know, when I, when I talked about Hank Goldberg dying at 82 years old, um, how I kind of regret the fact that I didn't make more time to go visit Hank in Vegas. I mean, freaking Ted's right around the corner. It's baseball season. He's not working right now. And I, you know, I've always been saying to Ted, Hey, let's get together for lunch. Let me come take you out to dinner, et cetera. And I, I haven't done it. So this is going to prompt me to, uh, to go visit with Ted. Cause I'll tell you, man, he's been a great influence in my life. We not so much in sports radio and not so much in media in real life. I can't tell you the number of times I've leaned on him and whined to him and cried to him about what was going on in my life, divorce, kids, money, et cetera, because he, he, he was not only a trailblazer in our industry, uh, in our community, but I mean, everybody knows about his personal life and, you know, married and married and married and married again. And so he's just a great resource, you know, and I, I, I always I think felt- it's, it's, it's great. People are honoring him when he's alive to hear it. Yes. That's the thing I'm most happy about. Like <laughs> yeah. he's getting these honors while he's alive to be thankful to have them. And that's to me, that's the best part about all of this. You know, you, you you're so right. You're so right, Brown. Um, the fact that he gets, because, you know, he'll lose it tonight. He will lose it tonight. Oh, he's going to cry, absolutely. Because when you think oh, yeah. about it, it's like he he would have liked to have continued doing the radio calls of the Padres games. They just, you know, they, I say that, you know, they were ready to get younger. They were ready for um, new blood. They were ready for a a whole new regime, if you will. And they've, they've done that. Um, but at least they're giving him his proper due tonight. So congratulations, Uncle Teddy. We love you. Uh, We appreciate you, and we will celebrate you tonight. All right, we are coming right back to the 7 Mile Casino Studios along with Browner and Grande. This is Kaplan and crew. Stick around, everybody. All right, great friends. What's going down? We are in the 7 Mile Casino Studios along with Grande and the Brown Man. This is Kaplan and crew. And um, in the last segment, when we were talking about Ted Leitner, (laughs) Alex told me, dude, from a video perspective, you look super dark uh, in my little dungeon here, my little dungeon of a studio. Um, so, Alex, it's been super cloudy out today, and mm-hmm. so I had to open up some windows. Am I am I brighter? Much better. Yeah. What do you yeah. think, Browner? Way way less sex dungeon. <laughs> more more studio now. Real more studio now. <laughs> well, I I will tell you guys like when I first built this this new home studio. The lighting was so screwed up here all the damn time. I had to hire a professional like television lighting guy to come in and and light the place. And then I had to buy all these like blackout curtains. So like you can see them over both of my shoulders. You know, I've got curtains. And then on my windows to my right and my left, I've got these blackout curtains. And then it's just so dark out, I guess, right now that I needed a little natural light. So I'm letting it in. Let the the sunlight in here, man. You know? Um, Hey, guys, listen, uh, we talked a lot about the Padres. And um, we talked about Ted Leitner tonight and Larry Lucchino tonight going into the Padre Hall of Fame. Again, I'm just going to encourage everybody, if you can get to the game tonight early to honor Ted Leitner, go for it. I'll I'll be watching it on television. I can't make it down tonight. And that goes for Larry Lucchino as well. Uh, Both guys really, really deserving of going into the Padres Hall of Fame. Alex, you mentioned that if San Diego State has a Hall of Fame, Ted should go into that too. J.D. Wicker, the athletic director from San Diego State, is going to be on the show later today to talk about San Diego State's future. And what is it? Is it the Pac-12? Is it the Big 12? Is it nobody wants San Diego State? I know there was a report earlier today about how, you know, Boise State has some value 
when it comes to football, like they've had enough success in football that other conferences might want a Boise State and maybe a San Diego State. But Boise State, just as an example, Boise State academically doesn't live up to Washington, Oregon. And by the way, Washington and Oregon are not Stanford and Cal. I mean, Washington's a tough school to get into, uh, but Cal and Stanford are like impossible schools to get into. Uh, Boise State, very easy school to get into. San Diego State, really, really, really hard to get into. What I'm saying is, is that, and this report was was written by Mark Ziegler of the Union Tribune, but it's something I told you guys about, and I know everybody kind of poo-pooed it, but the Pac-12 schools, I don't mean the athletic directors, I mean the schools, the presidents, the, the academic universities, they've always looked down at San Diego State and Boise State. So unless they get over that, the academic side, Boise State and San Diego State, Boise State more specifically, they're not attractive. They are from a football perspective, at least national reputation standpoint. Academics, though, these other schools look down on these kinds of schools. So I'll be really curious. I don't know what J.D. Wicker can, will say today, but I'll be curious to hear what he thinks about, again, depending on how candid he can be, what the future of San Diego State, what the future of the Mount West Conference is, and what San Diego State is talking about in terms of what do we do so that we don't get left behind. So J.D. Wicker will be here later today. I don't know about you fellas, but I'm, I'm kind of really looking forward to that, that conversation. Listen, I got. Yeah, one, I'm going to use it. I got one question. Go I got one question. Mm -hmm. I got one question. Have you called? Have you called? And that's it. Have you called? Either or. 12 or the pack or the big. Either one. Either one. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, has he, what do you think? I mean, I, I'm going to take a guess here. My guess is, is that somebody somewhere from the San Diego state community is contacting somebody somewhere from the PAC 12 saying, Hey, we want in, we add value this way or the big 12 and the same goes Either for one. the big 12. Yeah. Yes. Either way. Be do you know how we always blame Kevin Faulkner for losing <laughs> the chargers? That's yeah. going to be how sports fans remember yeah. Kevin Faulkner. The last thing JD wants to be is the Woo! guy that got left behind. The guy that was, you know, like, yeah, you got, you part, you were here for the stadium. You know, you got the stadium. But if, if San Diego State tumbles to media, I don't even know what, I don't even know what it's going to be. Like, right. that's not even, it's not even mediocrity. It's like, if, if Boise State leaves and the Pac 12 never calls and the Big 12 never calls and you're left in the Mountain West for in this black hole of, of, of being irrelevant when it comes to the major players, that's not a good, thing. <laughs> like, that's really bad. So I think like he's, I, I guarantee you, he knows that. I don't, it's not a surprise that uh, no one on the Mesas is, is, is I'm not breaking news to anybody over there. Calls are being made. There's no way he's sitting back and be like, you know what? Let's see what happens. Well, you know, Let's what the, see. But, but you know what the problem is, Alex, is that, and I say problem, I should probably call it a challenge. The challenge is that you've got, a report out there that the ACC, as an example, might be trying to combine forces with what's left of the Pac-12, which I don't think is a great move. There are also some reports out there that the Big Ten, for example, might look at the bottom feeders, the, the schools that they look at and they think, okay, well, here's this school. I'll, I'll make up an example. Northwestern. Don't let's not get into there in Chicago, and that's a great TV market. But just let's use Northwestern. Great academic school. Okay, have had some good football. Don't really have much profile in basketball. But let's just say you're the Big Ten, and you have to decide who would we rather have. Would we rather have Northwestern, or would we rather have? I'm making this up. Stanford. Would we rather have Purdue, who has some football tradition? obviously, and some basketball. I mean, has had good basketball in the past. Would we rather have Purdue in our league or would we rather have Washington or Oregon? So or there's Iowa State. There, okay, Iowa State, mm. another good example. You know, as mm. if you have Iowa State in your conference, which is a Big 12 school, do you want Iowa State or do you want Oregon? You know, and so I think what may eventually happen is that 
I think that these conferences may not necessarily be loyal to the bottom feeders. You know, if if you're the SEC, I'm, I'm making this up now. This is just an example. But if you're the SEC, do we have to have Vanderbilt? I mean, Vanderbilt's got a really, really good baseball program. They have virtually no football program. Their basketball program hasn't been relevant in a really long time. Yes, they're a great academic institution. But if I'm the SEC, I'm just giving you an example. Would I rather have Vanderbilt? Or might I say, we don't need Vanderbilt, but we'd rather have Miami. Mm. All I'm saying is, is that some of these conferences... Why about it? Iowa State is in yeah, the but, but, but I confuse them No, but they're, it's a fine example. Because if you're the Big 12, you may yeah. say, we don't need an Iowa State. I'm giving an example. We may rather have an Oregon. So... Are we going to be a 16-team conference? Are we going to be a 24-team conference? If we're going to limit ourselves to 16 and we've got 12 already and we added four, but we got four bottom feeders and they've got better schools and they've got better programs, let's kick these dudes out and go get those guys and bring them in. That's where San Diego State can get left behind. And by the way, I think there's a very good possibility that they get left behind by none of their doing just because they're just not on the top of a pecking order. See, and this is this, this is, is simple as this that. is where I will this is where I break from people. This is when you start this is when you have to sell them. Cuz I agree with you. Well, of course. I agree with you from an from a if you just put it on paper one next to the other, yeah, you might have an issue. This is where salesmanship. This is where presidents, this is where deans, this is where people earn their money. You are now a salesman. Use car, whether it's Mercedes or whether it's, you know, uh, use Hondas. It don't matter. You got to sell it like, it like it's a Bentley. Yeah. You got to sell, as hard you as, gotta sell it. As hard as, they, as hard as they went in, like as, as, as all in as they went for San Diego State West, they need to go 10 times harder, harder yes. for conference realignment. We are yes. the most winning t- football team uh, in California the last whatever years. We are the most winning basketball team in California for the last decade. We yes. are, we are, um, I don't know, whatever you want. We have a brand new stadium coming, opening in like to, a and month of, and a half, by the way. And um, of any team, <laughs> we have the largest market. Right. We have the, we're the 25th Wait, when you say, largest When you say of any team, what do you mean? What do you mean of any team? Of any other team you can go and pick up, whether that be Iowa State, all, all these other t- Boise State, uh, Cal. Uh, no, 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 uh, no, Stanford. No, 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 well, no. Cal's in no. San Francisco. Yeah, yes. Cal and, San- and Stanford, Northern California, San Francisco, much bigger TV market. How many? Yeah. How many people? I'm gonna look up how many people live in San Francisco. Give me one second. Talk amongst yourself. Okay, I just want to tell you that in terms of market size, I understand that. Again, York, it's about LA, selling. It's Chicago, about selling. Dallas, San Francisco, Houston. I mean, these Not are all doing a good job of selling. Yeah, I mean, listen, Browner, I hear you. I do hear what you're saying. You've got to sell. Because Francisco six, San Diego twenty seven. Wait, television market San Francisco six, San Diego yeah. twenty seven. Yeah, yeah. And and where's Seattle and all of that? I'm just curious. Seattle. Seattle. You almost have a list of of top television markets. Fourteen. Okay, so even Seattle is a bigger, better television market than San Diego, which always gets okay. me back okay. to Washington. Did, let me get let me get back to my because I just looked it up. Let me get back to what I'm saying to you. Go You're ahead. talking about the physical market of people that watch the televisions okay Mm -hmm. i'm talking about bodies that you can get to turn on the television for your sport you're talking about population Population. that's what i'm talking about you're talking about you're talking about selling television markets like yeah you can do that if you have a high television market what you don't have here is that so what Mm -hmm. you're selling your pitch is population Mm -hmm. your pitch is you can get more people to televisions you can get more people to organize college football events for the conference. You can have a better representation for the conference because you have more people here. That's yeah. my. That's what yeah. I'm selling. I that's know. my pitch. Yeah. It's a, listen. You, when you're desperate, you make. You gotta go. You, you, you that gotta, one doesn't sound that. That one doesn't sound as desperate as the San Diego being the king of conventions. That one was the more desperate one to me. They're 800,074 as of 2020. The census of 874,000 people are the population of San Francisco. San Diego, as of 2021, 3,270,000. Like, yeah, but but I'm going to tell you right now. No, no, you, but you're, 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 it's great that you're doing this, and I love that you're trying to sell it. But if you look at the San Francisco, like the overall population of the Bay, Bay Area, Area, 
versus just San Diego. Okay. Right. So, so you see, the thing is, is that San Diego is a TV. See, I never understood this either. It always bothered me when the Padres would be referred to as a small market. I'd be like, small market? We're like Whoa. the seventh or eighth largest population in the entire right. country. Yes. But but from a television market perspective, because the, the San Diego TV market ends at Camp Pendleton, because once you get north of Pendleton, you become the L.A. TV market. And when you go out east, when you get to Riverside County, they are the L.A. TV market. And when you go south, you're in Mexico. That's the, the San Diego TV market. And then when you go west, it's the ocean. So, so San Diego, from a TV perspective, is a tiny little blip on the map. But, but from an overall number of people who live in San Diego, I think it's like New York, L.A., Chicago, San Francisco-ish, Dallas, Houston, Phoenix. And then San Diego is like right there in terms of overall population. And but, so what can so so what can change that narrative? Getting people to watch the television. Yeah, but, make growing but, the market size because now you have a product but it's worth not, people coming to the television why for. Would you it's, want it's not, but it doesn't work worry like about that. Growing. It, it doesn't yeah, work why like you that. Worry about, you, why would you want to worry about growing when you just go get someone that's already you can't grown? you can't go from the 27th TV market to the ninth TV market. You can't do that because of your population. It, it's about oh. regional size. It's about how far to do the TVs reach. And they only reach, San Diego television reaches to Orange County down to the border. It's small. LA TV is Los Angeles County. Alex, when you grew and up in, in Oxnard. Who did said you not, that? Who created that? Browner, I don't know, man. That's not my deal. It's not. And it's if, not. But, that's what I'm, but that's what I'm, whoever's job it is to convince someone to take us this is their job to, to, to make that happen. They, like, that, who that, decided Orange County was Los Angeles? Who decided Riverside County was Los Angeles television market? It's not. No, but it is. By definition, it is. But Riverside is not Los Angeles. If I told you I lived in Riverside, By but, definition, I live, but I live in L.A. Why? Because the TV says I, I mean, live in L.A. The Angels are in L.A. Again, Anaheim's not Los Angeles. No, but it this is it, we're we're battling about something here. I hear what you're saying. You're you're trying right, and to that's be all I'm saying. you're trying to be a convincing. What else can San Diego State do to convince somebody that they're a worthy value add to the Big Twelve or to the Pac twelve or to anybody else that might create a conversation? You know what San Diego State hasn't done that they could have done. They've done everything that they possibly could. They've been successful. They they're building a stadium. They're building an expansion of the of the uh, of the university. What they haven't done, and this is where Boise has a leg up on them. This is where UCF has a leg up on them. Is that they haven't had a premier standout marquee season in either sport. They never had a Final Four run. They yeah. never had a signature bowl win where you're like, that's the one that's going to take us to the Boise State Oklahoma level. They never made the final four because of COVID. Damn you. That was the team. I think that was the team that, that really had a real chance. And they never even got to have the one seed ranking of the tournament. You know, they, they've had two sweet, sweet 16 runs. As long time as ago now, by the way. As, as successful as they've been in the regular season and in the Mountain West, it has not translated to the tournament. As successful as they've been in football, they have not translated it to a marquee bowl game victory. UCF had that undefeated season where they still call themselves national champions. Boise State, and I and I make fun of it, but it's true. They have the marquee win over over Oklahoma that everyone remembers forever. Right. It yes, is just ball. something right. that San Diego State has never had. And as silly as it sounds, it is a big deal to have that moment or that season that they can't put their hat on. Like, this is what we did. This is why we belong. This regular season success is one thing. National visibility like success is a whole other yeah Look, reputation reputation is important reputation is exactly what we talk about they are a mountain west school you know colorado is in the pac-12 their reputation is their pac-12 team that's already their leg up right i mean you would take san diego state in football and in basketball over colorado all day every day but colorado it just they just sort of fit with Washington. And by the way, Colorado 
and, and and by the way, Oregon. I mean, all I'm saying is that they they fit. The the Pac-12 went out and got Colorado away from what I think at the time was called the Big Eight, um, because that was like Colorado and Texas and Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. And I mean, this is this is now going back a while. And even the Denver TV market, I don't know what the Denver TV market is compared to the San Diego TV market. It's probably not too far off. I mean, if San Diego is 27, Denver's probably 17. Yeah. So you see, even Denver is significantly bigger in terms of a TV market. Browner, I'm with you. That San Diego State has to figure out what is it that we have that makes us valuable. We have winning success in, in football. We have, by the way, we have names. We have Marshall Falk is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Kevin O'Connell just became the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. I saw Kevin O'Connell with J.D. Wicker, who's going to join us later, touring this, the new stadium. Kawhi Leonard, multiple time finals MVP, multiple time NBA champion. Right. Like you have but they don't have but they don't have Heisman Trophy winners. They don't have national champions in basketball. They don't have final yes, four appearances. Correct. They Alex, your point is right on. They don't have a marquee bowl win. Um and and so look, like I, I love the Vegas bowl victory with, with DJ when he broke the record, but that's not they a played Houston. Yeah, that's not a nationally known thing because they right. played Houston. Right. So all I'm saying is this, uh, JD Wicker will be here later and hopefully JD can, can talk to us about this. You know, like I, I know my questions are, did you see this coming? Did you know this was happening? Did it catch you by surprise? Like it caught all of us by surprise. Cause you know what? It seemed to catch everybody else in the pac 12 by surprise. This was a I, well, very well kept my, secret. My biggest question is, are you attaching yourself to Boise again? Mm. I wouldn't be like, are you, a, are you a combo package? Mm. I would not be doing that. I would not I be doing either. that at all. I'm doing what's best for me. And yep. I don't need to team up with Boise State. I'm doing what's best for me. Because here's the thing. San Diego State is a significantly greater academic university than Boise State is. The expansion of the campus, more research that will be done. San Diego State will only elevate academically. And believe it or not, that's something you're going to have to sell. The future of San Diego State. Brand new football stadium, expanded campus, more research. And another thing you got to sell. We have a lot of very wealthy supporters. The John Moores of the world. The 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 Ron uh oh gosh. Fowler. Ron Fowler's of the world. The Jacobs family. Snapdragon, Qualcomm. That you gotta sell what you got, Browner. You're a thousand percent right. We just gotta yes. figure out what it is they have. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the stadium, yes. yeah, the stadium isn't you know, the stadium yeah. isn't sponsored by you know North Park hardware. You know, they're sponsored by an actual company. Yes, a yeah. big boy. <laughs> right. A big boy. You know, so. All right. Well, dude, we'll talk to J.D. Wicker. I also, coming up. I also need a tour of the stadium. JD. Yeah, so do That's I. He's giving him out. We'll, I know, we'll, we'll talk to J.D. about that. And what we should do is we should go tour it with him. We should do videos with it. And Browner, you should be flying your drone overhead while we're doing it. All right. Stick around, right. everybody. I want to just make a quick mention of our friends over at uh, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. You know, we were having this conversation a bit yesterday with Gary Cooper because he's such a big Aztec fan and supporter. If you have questions about buying a home in this market, selling your current home in this market, or trying to figure out where the market might be going and how it impacts you, talk to a pro. Talk to Gary Cooper. He's helped literally, without exaggeration, thousands of great friends over the course of the 20-year relationship that we've had together. Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299. All right, coming up, Dr. Fry is going to stop by. She's she's incredible. I love her. Dr. Fry's coming by. J.D. Wicker's coming by. And I can't wait to hear what Browner has to say about Otani now. Stick around, everybody. This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studio. I just want to break in for one quick second. A couple things here in the, the middle point of the show. Number one, I know you like the pink shirt today. I actually like the pink shirt today. I never wear pink ever, but I like the pink shirt. Uh, these are my friends. I know you probably can't really see it too well. Jeff's Beach Burgers. They're down in the La Jolla Shores. These are just friends of mine. That's all. They opened up this burger shop. The burgers are bomb. The shakes are amazing. If you're down in the La Jolla Shores, come visit them. That's all I wanted to say about that. Second thing I wanted to say is this Saturday, 12 to 2, we will all be at iThrive MD in Mission Valley. I want to see you guys down there, but you need to make your appointment, 858-240-1497. You'll save 30% on your IV. I know it sounds weird. Like, wait, on a Saturday afternoon, I'm going to go get an IV. What am I, going to the hospital? No, 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 no. This is not an IV where you're like, you're in the hospital and they're giving you hydration. This is an IV for your overall health. Yes, it's hydration. Yes, it's a ton of nutrients and nutrition. The thing is, it absorbs right into your body. 
I want to be as healthy as I can possibly be right now, especially knowing that COVID is still out there. I don't want to get it. So I'm going to do anything I can to prevent it. I Thrive MD. I'll see you guys down there on Saturday. Maybe Alex will actually remember this Saturday that we've got an IV lounge. <laughs> and the last thing I want to mention, <laughs> the last thing I want to mention is you can find all this information on our website, kaplanandcrew.com. There's a calendar of events there. So if you ever need to know like where the guy's going to be, what are the dates, what's the deal, you can find all this stuff right here on our website. And as Alex is scrolling down, you can see here is the Great Friends events and here's the IV Lounge. Hey, Alex, I can see the first one, which is this Saturday. When's the next one? It's 23rd. Okay, very good. All right, now scroll up if you don't mind. And one more reminder for everybody. Let's get you guys in the shop. This really, really, really helps the show. Um, if you come into our merch shop and you buy the Pay That Man t-shirt or the I'm With Dean t-shirt or if you buy the Let's Fucking Go San Diego t-shirts where we obviously blank out the word. But if you want any of our merch, we would appreciate you buying it. It's really high quality stuff. It gets to you quickly. And people are out there rocking it and they're sending us really great pictures of where they are. So we appreciate all you guys. This helps the show. We don't make a lot of money from it, but we do get a little bit. And I'm telling you, it helps. And I have big plans for what I, I want to do with the money that we generate from merch sales, but I'm keeping that a secret for now. All right, let's get back to the show. Hey, great friends, what's going on? Today is Thursday. It is July 7th. This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. Hey, uh, I want to talk a little bit later on here in this segment about what Shohei Otani is doing. And I'll be curious to hear if Browner is finally starting to come around to Otani's greatness. No. And by the way, that he cannot <laughs> carry segment. a team. No. He cannot carry a team by himself. I'm going to show you later on what Otani is doing for the Do or for the Angels versus what every other pitcher is doing for the Angels. And if if your blame is on Otani for the Angels being what they are, I think we got to do a deeper dive. We'll get to that coming up in just a few minutes, but Grande, Brown Man, yes. this uh, this Saturday, 12 to 2, we're going to be over at I Thrive MD, 1425 Frazee Road in Mission Valley. Really easy to get to. I mean, it's literally right off Friars Road. Uh, it's right across the street from Hazard Center. Everybody knows this shopping center. Very easy to get to. And we'll be there from 12 to 2. Mimosas will be served. We'll all be hanging around, having a really good time. But more importantly, we're all going to get healthier because Dr. Fry and the team at I Thrive MD Right here, Doc. Give it to me right here. Here is Dr. Fry <laughs> stopping by this afternoon. Hey, doctor, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Doing really, really great. Thank you. You know, we missed you last Saturday. I, I think I heard that I you know. were on vacation. Is that true? I was. I was. Anything fun and interesting? Yes, I went to the great state of New York. I went up to Rochester. Okay. Uh, <laughs> tell me on Rochester that as a vacation great spot. And yeah, lost like, his name. I mean, listen. I, I, listen I, I see. I see my friend Jim Rome. Okay, famous Rochester. radio host. Jim Rome vacations in Wisconsin. Now, a lot of people would say, "Why the hell do you go to Wisconsin?" But states like Wisconsin in the summer, or Michigan, the lakes Beautiful. in those yeah. parts of the country are spectacular. You know, and so everybody thinks of vacations. They go, oh, Hawaii. And I mean, listen, my Facebook is littered with people that I know that everybody went to Europe this summer, uh, mostly right. because they bought plane tickets two years ago, couldn't go. And they their vouchers are running out. Like, we better go now. We're going to lose it. And I feel like I have a little bit of FOMO about this. But I'm curious, Rochester, New York, what's going on in Rochester? I went to Lake Canadagua and it was so beautiful. I loved it. Yeah. I mean, I love, I, I love natural Lake light. Canadagua. You're testing me. Canadagua. Looking it up. I just, but I, yeah, I, I love, I love fresh water. I love fresh water. So like I have these Thank friends you. in Maine and they go and every summer they're at this lake in Maine. And if you said to somebody, well, we're going to Maine for the, for vacation, people are like really Wisconsin, Michigan, Maine, you know, Rochester, New York. Yeah. It doesn't sound sexy per se. Oh, that looks nice. <laughs> but I'll it's bet really you it's beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. yeah and nice, I'm a man. lake girl. I mean, I know I live in San Diego, but I grew up in New Jersey in a place called Mountain Lakes. I'm a lake girl at heart for sure. Yeah. I love like I used to have these friends in Maine and in the summertime I would go to their house and it was right on this lake. 
and the boat was out back and the sea dews were out back. And the best part of it was in the morning, true story, in the morning, you'd go out to the lake, jump off the dock, be in the lake, brush your teeth in the lake. Like no joke. Oh, what? No, no, seriously. <laughs> because, because everything with algae, everything revolved around this lake. I swear to God. You brush um, your teeth in the lake, dog. I'm telling you, bro. I, I thought it was crazy too, but they were like, no, this is what we do in Michigan. I spent a <laughs> summer in Michigan in suburban Detroit. And you would never know about the incredible lake life in suburban Detroit, Michigan. Auburn so, Hills. Um, Yes, out in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brown Urban, I mean, you know, you're a Chicago guy. There's I mean lakes in Chicago, yeah, right? Man. Ooh, listen, you cannot have a better time at Lake Michigan, bro. What you mean? What you mean? Yeah. The best Lake Michigan, <laughs> baby. Yeah. Yeah. So all the poor kids went. Oh, now we're ranking now we're ranking lakes. Right. Oh, they're huge. Well. I mean, it's Lake Superior, <laughs> right? The huge one. Yeah. We were going over it in the plane. I was like, this it literally looks like an ocean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But even like like later this summer, I'm going up to Mammoth. And um, there's a lake up there called Lake June. And I said to my mm -hmm. girlfriend, I'm like, I'm like, listen, we're going up for this blues festival, which, you know, just a music festival. Not that we like, not that there's bands that we're like, we got to go see these guys, but we, you know, it's just a fun thing to do. And I'm like, I must spend one day on Lake June. I want to rent a boat. Oh yeah. I want to go out into the lake. I want to anchor. I want to jump off the boat into the lake. I mean, I just love lakes. So when you say Rochester, New York, I didn't know if you were just going home. Or if you were like on a, on a vacay, so good for you, Dr. No, Fry. Yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed it. All right. Well, we're glad to have you back, and we're looking forward to seeing you on Saturday between 12 and 2. You know, me and, and Browner, we love the IVs. Alex here, on the other hand, he doesn't keep a calendar. Do you keep a calendar, Dr. Fry? <laughs> I do. I live by my calendar. I don't know any place where I'm going, anybody I'm supposed to be talking to. If it's not on my calendar, it doesn't exist. Rondé, tell Dr. Fry what happened this past weekend. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't have a calendar. I and 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 it's never failed me to not have a calendar. It's all in my head, and I and I just remember things. Uh, Saturday, you're like one I, of those waitresses that it's like a table I, of ten. I was, and she's a, yeah. like, Oh, I got it, and then everyone's already. Well, I was a server time. throughout college. I was a server and bartender throughout college, so I think that's exactly where I got wow. it. And um, I was sitting at home, and I told my fiance, I was like. I got to do something today. And I, I I don't know what I have to do, but I know I'm missing something today. And she's, and I asked her, I was like, don't we have something to do? Like, don't we have somewhere to go? She said, no. And I was sitting on my couch and I was like, all right, well, whatever. And I go open social media around one o'clock and I see the first post, literally the first post that pops up is Browner sitting there with an IV in his hand. And I was like, <laughs> I yelled a curse word and I got up and I was like texting him and I was like, oh, are you guys still there? I forgot. Blah, blah, blah. So 99% effective to not have a calendar except set the Saturday. I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Dr. Fry, um, it was a holiday weekend and, you know, people are scattered and they're traveling and whatever. Um, and they're busy and whatever. And so me, Browner, and of course our, our favorite Tommy, Tommy were there, yeah. but like Michael came in earlier in the day because he wanted to, you know, he, the 12 to two didn't work for him. Avery came mm -hmm. in the day before, but I I've noticed what happens is, is when we do these back-to-back -back weekends with the IV lounges one weekend, everybody's like, ah, I wanted to go and I didn't get a chance. And then this weekend I expect we're going to be, Oh yeah. Uh, I'm going to say we're going to be standing room only perhaps popping. Yeah. We are going to be. Popping. Yeah. And it also it's, after a holiday, everyone's been traveling. It's like literally the best time probably to get an IV. Um, and we have a really good discount. We have 30% off for IVs and 20% off for IM injections, uh, just in case you don't want to do an IV. Um, we have injections as well. Um, and that's everyone booking through you guys. Dr. Fry, um, while I'm there, I have to put in a special request today. You ready? Okay. All right. Uh, I want to get a testosterone shot and an NAD plus shot as well. Oh, okay. yeah. Yes. You, you, can you do all those together. I mean, can I you? could, I, yeah, you could do them all together as long as we have the proper blood work for you to get a testosterone shot. Well, how long does like when a guy goes home from I thrive MD and mm -hmm. you go home with testosterone shots already loaded. Okay. Is there like a shelf life of that? Oh, uh, no. I mean, and also they aren't refrigerated. I mean, I wouldn't suggest someone have them for over a month oh. um, just because we 
they, it does become less effective over time. But when we send someone home with a month, a month's worth, they're, they're fine. Okay. Um, I really need a testosterone shot. I know this is a fact. Yeah. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I feel Ooh. it. I know it. I know it. I know. I know I need a testosterone shot. I can definitely do a screening for you. Well, and we'll gotta, see where you're at. I got to do something. I got to get back onto my testosterone shots. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. definitely NAD is great too. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, Dr. Fry, while we've got you here for another minute, I want to ask you. So I've been doing the immune boost uh, mm -hmm. IV, um, but I've been, I've been starting to run again. Like I, I need to get back into running and it's very hard to get restarted running. So I'm thinking about the recovery boost this weekend oh, yeah. as well. What do you think about that one? I love the recovery boost. Um, I like that. I had someone who was running a marathon and I told him honestly to come in before and after uh, because it's not just good for recovery. It's good um, for preventing um, severe depletion. We add a lot of amino acids in there and vitamin C. Um, but a lot of times when we're depleted, and hungover, we lose amino acids. Uh, this is just, it's, so it's good for prevention too. And that's the same with running. Um, you're stressing your body out. And so when you stress your body, that's when you're most in need. So why not do it ahead of time um, to prevent? And a lot of times when we're running, we're feeling those effects and that's what make it, it's making us so tired. So I definitely suggest it before as well. Okay. I'm doing, can I, can I put recovery and immune in the same IV bag? Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. for sure. Okay. Um, Browner, Grande, have you guys looked at the uh, yeah. the chart? Energy, hangover, pain, sleep, immune, stomach, flu, beauty, recovery. I think I'm on a different menu now. Yeah. I think I I think I I think I do a chef's uh, chef's menu only. You know, whatever the chef decides is what I get. Mm -hmm. I gave him a nice big IM injection last time. What is IM? Yeah. Uh, intramuscular. Okay, what's that for? So it's basically the same thing as an IV. Um, the same ingredients, but it's going in your muscle versus your vein. So intravenous is IV and IM is intramuscular. Uh, so those are the glute shots. Alex glute shot, buddy. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't get it in the glute though. I gave it in his delt. Oh dude, I'm taking yeah. it in the glute. I want mine in my yeah. glute. Oh, nobody nobody on, needs yeah. to see that in IV. You, you got to schedule doing? an appointment for that one. Dr. Fry, can we pull off to a, you know, a room and you, you glute me? It's okay to say no. <laughs> yeah. It's okay to I say mean, no. I... <laughs> no, like I think you should loud. I think you should say no. She's a doctor. I, I I I do it all day. I really can't say no. <laughs> I mean But it's but it's but it's just, it's Scott. You can say no. Have you have you ever seen a gluten? <laughs> I'm never gonna turn no. down a patient in need. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did oh, I yeah. recover from that one? <laughs> yeah, hey, hey Yeah, doc. I'm cool in the I'm cool, I'm cool in the arm still. Yeah, nobody needs yeah, to see I'm, I, I'm glute free with my shots. So, Doc, before you oh, go, yeah. uh, Father's Day, a couple weeks ago, I land in San Diego. My four kids pick me up. We go into downtown San Diego where I'm going to take them to the waterfront because I really want to have their slider burgers. And I'm trying to get into this place with my four kids, 22, 20, 18, and 16. And the doorman oh, wow. is like, yeah, you, you know, I need IDs. I'm like, IDs for what? And he's like, for these guys. And I'm like, what? We want a table out here on the street. We just want to get some slider burgers. He's like, no, no, you can't have, it's, it's got to be 21. I'm like, really? For, for out here? And there's a very attractive blonde woman standing in front of me who then turns around and goes, do I hear Kaplan? <laughs> and who is it? I it's totally forgot Fry. about that. I felt so I dumb. Actually... I was trying to get my kids into a bar. Yeah, yeah I did see you with all your kids. Yeah. I was yeah. like, what's he doing? Okay, <laughs> I see you. He also he also came on the show the next day, like incredibly upset that a bar, a bar requires <laughs> people to show their ID. He's like, Why can't I bring my kids to a bar? And he literally went on Brown, you remember this? He went on for like 15 yes, minutes. Yes, he, he about was not how happy about it. About how it's the biggest BS that you can't take yeah. underage people into a bar. To a bar. I didn't want to take yeah. a See, I thought I, I thought I scared you off. I was like, Oh god, he doesn't even want to come in here anymore. No, I wanted to come in. I, in fact, but I didn't really want to go in. I just wanted to sit outside where I wanted to order the slider burgers and tater tots and, you know, things that I shouldn't be eating. But it was Father's Day and I thought it was going to be a lot of fun. And then I know it didn't work out for me. I'm sure they're regretting it now. 
Aren't you, aren't you like surprised when here I am, I show up, I'm so young and vibrant millennial. And there I show up with four kids that age. I mean, aren't you like, whose kids are these? It's gotta be the NAD. That's you know? what it is. Mm. It's the NAD. <laughs> he just show. likes, he, he just likes for people to say, wait, you got the, your kids are this old. How old are you? He appreciates that. So yeah. just, yeah. just give it to him. It's yeah. all the stuff we've been doing here. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Keeping me young. Yeah. Keeping me young. Yep. And fresh for sure. Looking. That's exactly right. For sure. Dr. Fry, we'll see you on Saturday between 12 and noon. Mimosas will be served. IVs will be had. I'm hoping for the testosterone and the NAD plus. We'll see if, if we're, we got the stuff in the house. Um, and oh, we yeah. look forward to seeing you. We're going to have a great time. I can't wait. All right, doctor. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys. All right. There she is. Dr. Fry <laughs> stopping by to talk to us a little bit All about right. what's going on this Saturday. And we'll see everybody down there, 12 to 2, I Thrive MD. Make your appointment, 30% savings, 858-240-1497, 858-240-1497. Can I uh, go back to the previous segment? Yeah, please do. Oh. I don't know how much we can trust reports right now with conference realignment, mm -hmm. but you know, John Wilner wasn't like a huge, no, huge, hugely known name, and then he broke this news and then went from rumor to confirmed in less than 12 hours. Mm-hmm. So another blue check mark has tweeted, mm -hmm. but he runs a uh, college swimming website. College, how you get swimming. the information? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can you doesn't can matter. know the right person because hey, it's not just football and ba basketball right. that's, that's realigning. This is all well, sports realigning. Right. So well, if, I mean, think about this. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but in the LA Times the other day, there was an article written. Um, and Martin Jarmond, who is the athletic director at UCLA, was quoted. And I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but what he was saying was that because UCLA will join the Big Ten, for all intent and purposes, their athletic department has been bailed out. In other words, yeah, I saw that. Like they were mismanaged financially, right? From what I understood, and again, I just read this. It's not like I did any deep investigation, I just read it in the LA Times. But from what I read, the UCLA athletic department was like $100 million in debt. The reason nice. that, that the reason they had gotten so far in debt was um, COVID related issues, um, you know, that sports dealt with during that two year window. The other part of it uh, was the lack of television revenue from the Pac-12. So as a result, the money that UCLA will now make by being a partner in the Big Ten, it dwarfs the money that they were making with the Pac-12. And because of this new infusion of capital, UCLA's what they call Olympic sports. So think volleyball and softball and baseball and track and field. Think about the Olympic sports. Those sports have been saved because you guys remember Stanford sticks out to me. But remember Stanford during COVID cut sports. They're like, not football and basketball, but they did yes. cut certain sports. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah. It could have been I gymnastics for all I remember. I, I, Olympic caliber sports. UCLA has said publicly, our program has virtually been saved by this move. So, Alex, you're saying about this swimming person. What's the deal? Braden Keith on Twitter, who is verified, says, Source, North Carolina, Florida State, Clemson, and Virginia are all negotiating to join the SEC. Then it'll be over. Wait, wait, wait. Let me just North Carolina, mm -hmm. Florida mm -hmm. State, mm -hmm. Clemson. Virginia, all negotiating to join the SEC. Now that's that. Now that's super interesting to me for this reason. First of all, we asked the question earlier: Are San Diego State and Boise State married the way UCLA and UC in USC are? I said I don't think they should be. Wouldn't you guys have thought that Duke and North Carolina are married? Yes. Like like if if North Carolina is going, Duke's going. Like wouldn't you have thought that? Yes. Yes. And and, and I'll say this. I would have thought that Florida State and Miami are married as well. And Florida that it, reportedly doesn't want Miami to join. Okay. According to really, article. yeah, interesting. Kentucky doesn't want Louisville to join if you're because they're not part of these negotiations. Mm -hmm. um, Tennessee doesn't want North Carolina, but I don't think anyone's listening to Tennessee right now. So, <laughs> but if I'm North Carolina, <laughs> let me tell you something. If I'm North Carolina. I mean, from a football perspective, I'm walking into the SEC. I, I am not looking good. Now, from a basketball perspective, I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it. From Florida State, traditionally, my football team can hang, but not lately. 
Basketball team's pretty good too. Not great, but pretty good. Um, the other schools you said were Virginia. Now, Virginia is like, when you think about the academic schools of the of the ACC, Virginia, Duke, North Carolina, those are the big academic schools. Those are the Stanford, Cal type schools of, of that region. So you got Florida State, North Carolina, Virginia, and Clemson. Wow. Um, see, guys, you talk about San Diego State getting left behind. I'm looking at my school, Pitt, and I'm mm. going there. They joined the, S the ACC because the Big East broke up, and I always wanted Pitt to go to the Big Ten, and now a school like Rutgers is in the Big Ten rather than Pitt. Uh, yeah. Rutgers is in the Big Ten rather than Syracuse. You know, um, I really wonder what's going to happen here. Wow. So, so Miami could find themselves left out of this SEC thing. So if the ACC basically loses uh, some schools, some significant schools, then this Pac-12 ACC alliance that was rumored kind of just goes away. Or then now is there openings in the ACC if that is, an, you know, like there's just so many, like JD might come on here in, in, in two segments and be like, yeah, I don't know. Like, we'll, <laughs> like, there's, like, who knows guys. But I'll tell you this again, again, here, just think about the schools we're talking about. The SEC went out and got Oklahoma and Texas. That started this next round of realignment. Now the SEC has Oklahoma and Texas. If they get Virginia, Clemson, again, Virginia, not great football, but great basketball traditionally. Yeah. Virginia, basketball, North Carolina basketball, Florida State and Clemson football. I mean, you've just added. And again, it just makes it so that you wonder with Oregon and Washington and these kinds of Stanford, Cal, with these kinds of schools available, San Diego State's a second-class citizen right now, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, it's, and I think it's how much power, how much say do the television networks have? How much of this All is of CBS? It. How much of this is ESPN? So if ES, if I'm, if you're ESPN, and you have deals with the ACC and SEC, like why are you allowing them to split up two separate deals to then probably have to pay every school way more for one conference? Oh, man, this is getting heavy. Um, J.D. Wicker will join us coming up shortly, the athletic director from San Diego State, and perhaps he can answer some of these, these questions that are all, at this point, really just in theory. We'll talk to J.D. Wicker coming up. But coming up next, I want to get to the most recent performance from Shohei Otani. And let's see what Browner has to say about this. We'll get there next. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios here on Kaplan & Crew. What's going on, everybody? Coming up, J.D. Wicker, the athletic director from San Diego State, will be here. We've spent a lot of time talking about this today, conference realignment and the next round of rumors. We'll get to J.D. Wicker coming up. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios with Grande and the Brown Man. <laughs> this is Kaplan and crew. So um, before we get to the highlight of the day, guys, I want to uh, talk about Shohei Otani. I feel like the Angels, since they're – 14 game losing streak since the firing of their manager since the big brawl against Seattle. I mean, I just feel like all of these things had the angels front page for a while. And now I feel like the angels have gone deep into like to where they normally are. Right. Irrelevance. You know, the, the, the angels are kind of like the chargers. You know, they've got some premier players that everybody looks at and goes, they're really great. But then everybody's always trying to figure out why can't they ever get out of their own way? Why can't they ever succeed? Well, I can tell you one reason that they uh, that they should be succeeding, and they are, at least when this guy pitches. Dude, Otani, and again, you may not be watching it, and if I'm being honest, it's not like I'm sitting at home watching Angels games. But Otani extends his scoreless streak. This is just, this is just hard to believe. I mean, we talk about some of the, you know, the, the Dodgers having a pitcher that's undefeated. We talk about the Padres and what Joe Musgrove was doing earlier in the year. What Otani is doing right now, at least during this stretch, yet again, something we've never really seen before. Just total dominance in his last five starts. Go ahead, Alex. Give us the numbers. Five and zero. Oh. 0.27 ERA in over 33 innings pitched, 46 strikeouts, hitters only hitting 139 against him. 
the scoreless streak is he has now had four consecutive games without. And I believe one games. other number that we didn't put on here is in that total in that time five five games sixteen total hits. Sixteen total hits against Otani in that period of time. So here's the thing: Otani is doing things yet again that we've never seen before in the history of baseball. ESPN Stats and Information put out a tweet yesterday that Otani is the first player since the RBI became an official statistic back in 1920, 100 plus years ago, to do the following in a single game. 10 strikeouts as a pitcher, two RBIs as a batter, and a stolen base. What I'm saying is this guy is doing things that we've never seen quite before. And yet he plays on such a terrible team. In fact, take take a look at this. <laughs> uh, the Angels, since June 3rd, so here we are and we're in, on July 7th. Since June 3rd, when, when Otani pitches, the Angels are 5-0. and When the rest of the staff pitches, the Angels are 6-20. and And just to give you an idea, Browner, of what this looks like, because, you know, you've said all along his performances don't mean anything to you because he plays on a team that doesn't win. I don't know what else you want this guy to do, but look at this chart. These are the games over the course of how long, Alex? How many how many weeks are we talking about here? Is this the last 25 games or so? Okay, this is this is it. So June 3rd. 26 games total. Since June 3rd, 26 games. Every game that Otani has pitched, they've won. And everything else has been a, a big loss. I mean, I, Browner, I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how you want one guy to do any more. He's carrying, he's doing the best he can as an individual, but the rest of the pitching staff is so bad, apparently, for the Angels. I mean, this, this just to me exemplifies his greatness as an all-around player. So, what, what, what rip job do you have today for Ophony? Man, listen, y'all already know where I stand on this. I don't even know why you came in here with these old stats that he ain't done this and nobody done this since this and all these, no, all this, that. Hey, man, keep it. Keep it, man. Keep it. Win something, bro. Win something. I, okay, cool. Be, you can, he's a good pitcher. I've never said he's not a good pitcher. You think he's never said he's good? not a good hitter. You think he's people, pretty good. People saying, people were telling me he's the best player in the history of baseball. Prove it. Win something. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Win something. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not influenced by the oh, since 1920, blah blah. I right, gone by and and what's your point? Loss. I want to start a campaign. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna start a campaign right now. Yeah, win Leave something. Otani, win something. Leave. No, it's not. I don't really care if he wins because whatever. Leave. Like you got to leave the Angels. You got to. Like you cannot resign there. I don't care if they offer you a billion dollars. You can't resign there. You're never gonna win. Never. Like the Angels, they're cursed. I don't know. There's something there, man. Like they got to trade Trout, trade Trout, and Otani's got to leave. Otani all money ain't good leave. money. All good. All money ain't good money. Something's rotten in that organization. There's no reason. There's no reason in hell they should be this bad. No reason. No yeah. reason. It's unex it defies logic. Well, how about, it defies how about logic? How about I mean, just look at their pitching staff. I mean, they've they've put money into Trout, they've put money into Otani, they put money into Rendon, right? They they've put money into guys, they put money into Albert Pujols before that. They they have put money into players. Uh, they just have never, for whatever reason, been able to build a real starting pitching staff. Put it this way. If the Angels had the Padres pitching staff, if they had, just imagine if they had Otani as their one and they had Darvish as their two and Musgrove as their three and Snell as their four and Gore as their five. I'm just making this up right now. Think about if you got the Padre pitchers to do what they've done so far this year for the Padres and they did that for the Angels, how likely different the Angels might be because this is really quite – this is an unbelievable statistic that – and, Alex, if you go back to it, the the Otani starts versus the rest of the staff's starts. It's just – it's incredible that they're this bad, that 
He's five and zero, oh, and the rest of the staff is six and twenty. So over the course of thirty one games, that's what the chart is, Alex. It's thirty one games. Over the course of thirty one games, they've won eleven. They've lost twenty. Of the eleven that they've won, he pitched in five of them. Twenty six games goes by, and their staff outside of Otani is six and twenty. When you say he has to leave, let me just caution you guys of of what happens if he leaves. I don't care if he goes to the Dodgers, the Yankees. They me neither. Whatever. Yeah, me no, neither. that's that's what's gonna happen. They're gonna keep. They're gonna keep getting those players. Like right. so, let's just let. That doesn't scare Win. me. Because like they like the Dodgers already have like five right. MVPs on their team. Like, like they they do it anyway. So it's like to say, oh, if he leaves, you go, be careful. He's gonna okay. go to the Dodgers. Right. So is everybody else. Right. Well, that's <laughs> so if you want to else. take money, you go to the Angels. If you want to win and take money, you go to the Dodgers or the Yankees. Well, that's that's what's going to happen. He's going he's going to yeah. wind up going to the Dodgers or the Yankees. I I'm more inclined to just guess. I'm just guessing here. I'm more inclined to guess that he's going to go to the Dodgers because yes. he's already here in Southern California. Number one, um, they've got a uh, an Asian community in LA large, that large. would love to support a player like this. But so man. does New York, though. So does New York. So I would I would argue that's a that's that's. 50 50. And, and listen, I don't know anything about Otani's childhood growing up. Was he, did he grow up and go, Hey, my dream is to play for the Yankees or Hey, my dream is to play for the Dodgers or my dream is to play in America for a major league team. I don't know if there's any, anything in there that and he cares about, but, the, but I'm just telling other you this. Thing I will say, yeah, go ahead. Nothing. Dodger stadium is great. It's old. Well, it's got history. Nothing rocks like Yankee stadium. Nothing. Nothing. Can't honestly tell you that I've been to the new Yankee Stadium. I mean, now the old Yankee Stadium, which is, you know, was right next door. Yes. I've been in there many times in my life. And yeah, it, it rocked. Um, Dodger Stadium rocks too. I, I, did, I didn't say it doesn't. Dodger Stadium. I didn't say it doesn't. Too. Doesn't rock like Yankee Stadium, new or old. I wonder, like, tomorrow, I'll, I'll do the math tomorrow. Well, I won't. Google <laughs> will. But because the Angels offensively are, are pretty awful. Like they've scored the twenty fourth most runs, they struck out the most in all of baseball. They do hit a lot of home runs, but I want to see like what percentage of their total offense are Otani and Trout responsible for? Because I think mm -hmm. that's literally all they have. You know, like just by looking at runs scored, which isn't like a whatever. Like they've scored three hundred thirty runs together. Trout and Otani have scored over a hundred. So like they're responsible for thirty percent of their runs. Mm -hmm. If I start going breaking down what they're responsible for home runs and and RBIs and all, everything like that, I bet you it's like they're probably responsible them two together for the teams like thirty to forty percent of everything they've done. Remember during the NBA Finals when there was a moment where everybody thought that Boston was going to win, and there was a conversation. Game three. There was a conversation where people were like, "Could Steph Curry be the MVP of the NBA Finals even if Golden State were to lose?" You know, there was a whole national conversation going on about that. It obviously, it became a moot point because the Warriors went they on won. to win. Right. Yeah. But this is what this is what Otani is. He is singularly the greatest player currently playing Major League Baseball because of all the different things that he does. He can hit home runs like Aaron Judge, and he can pitch like Max Scherzer. So he is he is the best overall player in baseball who plays sadly on one of the worst teams in baseball. And there's just nothing that he as an individual can do to change this. They have hit 99 home runs this season. Trout and Otani have 41 of them. I that's mean, that's 40%. No, no, it's more actually. It's 40 no, it's more. It's more than 40%. What is it? Yeah. Well, they've hit, they've hit 99, like, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and he, they've hit 41 yes. combined. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you know, yep. it's 45%. 40%. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, Still, it's crazy. Yeah. 99 and 41. Let's Let's that's 40 percent around 40 percent. Well, a hundred versus 40 40 percent. So 99 versus 41 is you know, whatever it is. 42. I, listen, who cares? Bottom I mean, line is they have 326 mm -hmm. RBIs, the team. Otani and Trout combined for 101. Okay. So there's there's 30 percent. Yeah. Like they literally are responsible for thirty to forty percent of their entire offense. Right. So Browner, when you say just win, <laughs> when you tell me how bad Otani is and how bad Trout is, because ultimately the Angels don't win, all I'm saying is this: they are thirty percent of the RBIs, 
their 40% of the home runs. And from a pitching perspective, I'm not sure exactly. 30% of the runs scored. 30% of the runs scored. But from a pitching perspective, if you look at Otani's record versus number of starts versus the Angels' overall record, he's he, he might be 30 or 40% of their wins as a pitcher. Listen, I hear what you're saying. My argument is the same. If you're that great, if you can influence the game in that many ways, so when he's not pitching, he's hitting. Trout's hitting. They're the bulk of the offense. They, yeah, That's really no different than the, about, I don't know, 26 other teams in Major League Baseball. Like, you should be better. Oh, Otani's responsible for 24. 24- Four percent of their wins in pitching. You should the team should be better. Well, but they're not because there's two guys on the team, and then there's seven other guys on the team that are, they're bad. You know, and there's a whole bunch of pitchers that can't get the job done. We got seven Hosmers on their team, yeah. man. Again, I'll always come back and say this to you. You know, your your <laughs> point. You, hey, listen, you always say it. You, they, <laughs> no, it was. I know. Cole, there's more they, players. They should be. They should be winning. There's, all right, there's seven Grishams on their team, dude. They should be winning, and and when the Padres get get Tatis back. And the Padres don't win, you know. I'm just gonna keep putting it back to you, man. Hey, if Tatis is so great and Manny's so great, how come this team doesn't win? So I'm just, I'm listen. You know, next time Otani pitches, I'm gonna watch the game. I'm gonna sit down. No, you're not. I, no, you're not. Yeah, I am. No, you're well, it depends not. who he's pitching against. See, and now it's already changed. <laughs> Look five days into the future. He might get one more. He might get one more in before the All Star break. I thought. I thought. Uh, I think he pitches games. like every six or seven. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's every seven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I gotta yeah. say, I mean, listen. You may not be impressed, Brown, um, and you may I'm be not. using this. You may be using this whole. I, I don't know how you can't be. I mean, I don't know how. You, who else in Major League Baseball, over the last five, over a course of five games, has ever pitched like this? He's got the third most wins in baseball. He's got the ninth best ERA in baseball. Um, he's got the eighth most strikeouts in baseball. Like he, he's having a better pitching season than he is a hitting season this year. Is he going to win a Cy Young? And hitting, he, and hitting, he still. And if he keeps going like this, he really might. Probably going to win the MVP if things keep so he's going. He's eight like and this. four with a he's eight and four with a two four ERA, and he has the eighth most strikeouts in all of baseball. And he doesn't pitch every five games; he pitches every seven games. So the, the MVP is reserved for a hitter, not for a pitcher. Well, a he's pitcher can win the MVP, finish. but you have to be a winner. He is a winner. The team. He has a winning record on a team that has a significantly losing record. Like, right. That's and, a and, really and, good accomplishment. And, and by the way, you don't have to be a win you don't have to be on a winning team to win the MVP in baseball. And we've had this conversation before. You look back to last year, everybody who was a finalist for MVP was all on a losing team. All three of them. Washington, Philadelphia, and I want to say I think well in, in the San Angels. Diego. Oh, and the Padres. Well, no, I'm the just Padres. To forget about yeah. the T's, huh? I see you. Well, I mean, how out of sight, out of mind, pal. I tell you, that's why I don't. That's why when I ever I hear all these Otani numbers, I'm like, oh, cool, right? Where are they at in the standings? That's all. That's all. Okay. Well, let's go see. to another team. Go to the Dodgers. Do yep. it in the playoffs. Then watch. Then you'll have my attention. Yeah. And then, and then you're gonna be like, yeah, but he's doing right. The Dodgers, Dodgers are so they have so many all stars that I'm not yeah. impressed. He's not even. He's not even their best player. Again, Mookie Betts is their best player. He would be. He would be unbelievable. I mean, what Otani is doing and, and the fact that he's doing it on a, such a bad team. And even though they call themselves Los Angeles, everybody knows that they're not. And they are completely irrelevant. The, it is just like typical is it chargers, clippers, angels. You've got big superstars. Everybody thinks you're going to be good. Cause on paper, that's what you're supposed to be. But organizationally, this is what they do. They waste great talent sad all right hey listen um jd wicker's on the way so this gives us a moment right now it's a really good time for us to break out the highlight of the day man it's time for the highlight of the day man Do you want to get high man i'm just really hi highlight of the day brought to you by tory holistics go to kaplan and crew.com click on the tory banner and when you spend $75 at either Tory or California Holistics, you will get 20% off your purchase. If you spend a minimum of $75. Promo code SD Pride online or in person. Promo code SD Pride. Okay. I just love when all of our listeners and viewers go to Tory Holistics or California Holistics. 
They walk out. They've gotten these amazing deals. They take pictures and then they send them to me. And then I take the pictures and I send them to Ruthie and I go, do you, do you believe how much cannabis our audience consumes collectively? So I want to thank everybody who, uh, good amount who, who goes out there to these stores good and supports amount. our sponsor intake responsibly yes, exactly right okay i think if browner if browner has otani in baseball i have chet holmgren in basketball i am now chet holmgren hater number one <laughs> wow because yesterday my man got bodied by a person named kenneth lofton jr who Son is of- not kenny lofton the baseball players that's not his okay player. hey by You're the way speaking though. of the name lofton speaking of the name lofton <laughs> yeah. shout out to my man james lofton who uh it was his birthday yesterday i should know how old james is uh james lofton's birthday yesterday and when i sent him a happy birthday message he sent me pictures of himself <laughs> uh and Where's his he wife at? beverly down in cabo i think they were because you know nice. james likes james likes his tequila you know so uh um, cool. happy birthday to my man james lofton this is Kenneth Lofton, big boy, who looks like he's a big boy. First play of the game, took Chet to the rim, which is what everybody's going to do against oh, him. Oh, goodness. Just bodied him up all the way. Scores easy. My Browner, boy Browner, Kenneth, Browner, that looks who, like Kevin I Garnett hope- bodying you down. It just looks like Kevin Garnett <laughs> just looking at Browner going, oh, you want some? Okay. It was worse than that. Yeah. Come get well, some. He finished, he, he way he finished worse with a that. dunk. It was worse than that. Yeah. Oh, it was way worse. Was That's worse just the first play of the game. Kenneth, Kenneth went at my man. Kenneth finished with 19 points yesterday. So shout out to Kenneth for putting it on Chet like he did. And how'd Skinny do? How, how, how'd Skinny do? 11 score? points. A little measly 11 points. Wow. Uh, all okay. he, he's like he's like Sean Bradley. All he has to do is like just no! dip it in. He just what? dips it in on top. <laughs> Sean <laughs> Bradley, to come yeah, on, man! Yeah. I told George you, George Mershon. He's like George Mershon. He just gets the little oh tiny ball. He just oh little, little puts it in. I'm not even gonna do that with you. He's my Otani Browner. I, I, I. That's <laughs> that's that. I'm gonna go with it. This man every game. Wait till he wins. And I know he's. And I know he's not gonna win on the Thunder. So, okay. yeah, right. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, listen. Hey, uh, JD Wicker is gonna join us in the next segment, and I can see that JD's getting ready to jump in here. Um, so just everybody stay with us. J.D. Wicker is going to join us in the next segment. We've been talking a lot about this today because it seems like every day after the USC-UCLA announcement, everybody's trying to figure out who's going to land where. And the rumor from earlier in the day now that the SEC is talking to Virginia, Florida State, North Carolina, and Clemson, the fact that, I mean, listen, that the report is out there. You know, a lot of times I think of these reports and I say, okay, this is just rumor, it's speculation. But last week, rumor and speculation was confirmed fact in like a, like an afternoon. It went from, hey, we think US, USC and UCLA are leaving for the Big Ten. What? No way. It doesn't make any sense to, by the later in the day, USC and UCLA were putting out press releases. From our perspective, as Aztec supporters, as San Diego State fans, and in Alex's case, as a San Diego State alum, we're all worried about what happens now to San Diego State. Where do they go? Who wants them? Where does San Diego State add the most value? This is the conversation we plan on having with J.D. Wicker, the athletic director from San Diego State. And, by the way, we got to butter him up a little bit because, uh, I, yeah, we it. want one of those stadium tours, man. Stadium freaking looks unbelievable. Really, really does. And the picture of J.D. and Kevin O'Connell the other day on Twitter was great. J.D. Wicker, the athletic director of San Diego State, is next. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. All right, everybody. We've been promoting all show long that San Diego State Athletic Director J.D. Wicker is going to join us. So welcome back to all the 1090 radio listeners. Uh, to everybody on YouTube, you've been with us. Jump into that YouTube chat and uh, and, and let us know what you think about this, uh, this interview we're about to do. Uh, To everybody that's listening on audio podcast, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, Amazon Music, iHeart. Uh, Glad to have all the podcast listeners here. And on television tonight, Channel 4 San Diego, part of the Cox Review Network. You'll see this interview with JD on Channel 4 in San Diego. You'll see it on Channel 4 in Santa Barbara. You'll be catching up to it tonight on Channel 118 in Orange County and in Los Angeles. So here he is, the athletic director from San Diego State. J.D. Wicker returns to Kaplan and crew. J.D., good afternoon. How's things going? 
Uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, everything is going well. Uh, Aztecs are in good place. We're less than two months to opening the new stadium, and we're excited. JD, this new stadium, um, I drive by it all the time. I'm blown away by what I see. I desperately want to get in. I see uh, friends of mine that are Aztec alums and supporters that have taken the tours. They've eaten the food. Uh, it just it really went from a few years ago, a controversial vote and blah, 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 to today it's reality. And it just looks amazing. I have to congratulate you and everybody at San Diego State. And hopefully the stadium is everything that we community-wise want it to be. I, I, I actually can't wait for it to open. So uh, congratulations. The place looks amazing. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. It's uh, we're very excited about uh, you know what we're doing. We said all along we wanted to build a, a building for the community of San Diego. It was going to be great for Aztec football, and it's going to be great for the Wave FC. It's going to be great for the San Diego Legion. It's going to be great for all the parrot heads that are going to show up on October twenty second. We're delivering on the concerts. We said uh, great conversations around you know men's professional soccer. Uh, you know, and other events that we've got lined up that we haven't announced yet. So, uh, and it's, it's, it's going to be spectacular. It's, we, we really took to heart, you know, we're in San Diego. Uh, it's uh, great weather year round. So a lot of phenomenal social spaces in the building, uh, all of the premiums, good, uh, food partners, uh, beverage partners that we've yet to announce that'll be coming. So it it will be the place to be. J.D., I got to ask this question, I'm, and I know this is going to sound like way off the beaten path, but why did you guys choose to do, uh, to go with a natural grass surface rather than, you know, not dealing with the maintenance and the cost by just laying down a turf surface? Yeah, you know, I think that's something, you know, we've played football on natural grass forever. Uh, soccer prefers natural grass as well. Um, so, you know, we'll see how it goes. We've got, you know, a, a great surface that, you know, one of the thing, one of the issues before uh, at SDCCU was you'd get into the cooler months and the grass didn't grow as well. But, you know, we think we've got um, a version that will, you know, help us avoid that. Uh, we, we know we're going to probably have to replace the field at least once or twice a year. Uh, so we're budgeting for that. So it, it's going to be a great surface. It, it'll be interesting to see how it holds up under everything. Uh, but we've got a great crew and a great turf. Yeah, place looks amazing, really does. Cannot do anything other than congratulate and thank San Diego State because, um, you know, we didn't want you guys playing up in L.A., frankly. Um, J.D., when does the rest of it get going? I, when I say the rest of it, I mean the surrounding area around the stadium. When does San Diego State's expansion happen after yep. the stadium opens? Yeah, so we'll probably un be under construction for the first residential uh, block, probably first quarter quarter, maybe second quarter of 2023. And then the innovation district follow it probably follows end of 23 in beginning of 24. Uh, the river park will open in 2023, uh, probably fall of 2023. So it's, it's moving along. We're definitely, you know, there's a lot of work going, you know, there was obviously a lot of work to get to the point where we are. Hotel conference center is probably a number of years away. Uh, but, you know, beginning, you know, probably early next year, you'll start to see that first residential building go. And then you'll continue to see buildings popping up over the next 10 to 15 years. All right. J.D. Wicker is here. He's the athletic director at San Diego State, along with Grande and the Brown Man. This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. But you're done, right, J.D.? Like, your you're, stadium's done. You got bigger fish to fry now. Like, you're going to move to conference realignment and MLS or you don't have anything to do with the residential and like you yourself. But yeah, you ain't been in no beds, are you? Yeah. We got no, I mean, obviously right. we still have, we have about 57 <laughs> days to go or something like that. So I, I don't know if it's a freight train bearing down on us or the light at the end of the tunnel, but we'll be ready on September 3rd. Uh, and then, you know, we're involved with everything else going on just because, you know, when the stadium, when we have a stadium event, it, it will impact the entire site. So we just want to make sure that, you know, everyone remembers what that means. But no, we're, we don't have any decision making and, you know, what's going where. Uh, we're not putting any beds in rooms. We're not deciding <laughs> who's going to the innovation district, those types of things. Um, so, yeah, so at that point, we'll move on to, you know, what our next project might be. 
All right. So JD Wicker, let, let's jump right into then what we really wanted to talk about, which is, let me start off with, by asking you this question. When you heard about USC and UCLA, is this news to you or in your industry, is this something that everybody kind of is hearing whispers about and they kind of know it's coming? Cause I can only say this JD from our perspective, in the morning, it was USC and UCLA are rumored to be going to the Big Ten. And by afternoon, they were putting out press releases. So I don't know if this just got out there. It seems like everybody in the Pac-12 was caught off guard. How about you guys? You know, I've heard for a long time that SC, you know, looks longingly at, at, at other places. I can go back to my time in Washington State. And, uh, you know, SC talk, talked a lot about it. Um, you know, and I guess when I heard the news, I was surprised just because I had not heard anything about it at that point. Um, but it, it doesn't surprise me the move was made. UCLA does surprise me a little bit. Um, however, you know, nothing, I guess, surprises me in college athletics these days. Uh, I'm happy they gone. I'm, I, listen, I'm, I'm full disclosure. I'm happy they gone because now that makes room for us. When I say us, I mean San Diego State. Have you made the call? Talk to me. Give me some good news. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, this kind of goes back to, you know, it goes back to the stadium discussion. You know, all throughout the stadium, everyone's been asking, you know, what are you going to do? Who's going to play there? Uh, we've talked to everybody, um, as we did with the stadium. We're talking to, you know, all the different players as we think about, you know, conference realignment. Uh, obviously, we have done a lot to place San Diego State uh, in a good position. Um, between, you know, if you look at certain commissioners out there who have said, you know, the commitment needs to be made to football and you need to invest in it. Well, we're investing in football. Uh, the academic institution is growing. Uh, that's very important for the Pac-12. I mean, if you look at the Big Ten, the Big Ten, you know, while they put, you know, a lot on what their athletic is, every school in the Big Ten is an AAU institution, which is the highest academic designation you can have, except for Nebraska. And they were an AAU when they went in. So USC and UCLA are in the Big Ten because they're AAU institutions, along with, you know, the LA market and, um, you know, being pretty good in, in athletics. So uh, it's important for the academic side of the house to be doing very well, Mission Valley, and that uh, the ability to grow our research footprint is really going to help. Uh, and our success across the board. I mean, not only are football and basketball doing well, we've got 55 conference championships in the last 10 years. So we're successful across the board. Okay. So does San Diego State have this designation, this AAU? No, we are. Our goal is to become a research one, which is, you know, kind of the next designation below AAU. Uh, we've been held up because of, you know, basically state of California law back in the 60s, they made the decision you would have the UC and the CSU. The UC would do research, the CSU would do workforce development. And so like San Diego State can offer an independent doctoral degree. And that's a big thing for research one uh, and, to, you know, and to get, you know, folks on campus for research. So uh, we've done a lot of good work on workarounds. We do joint doctorates. We had, I think we'll have you know, North last year we were 140 million in research dollars. Uh, we should be more than that this year, and so we think we'll be an R1 next year, which is you know a, an important designation to have. Got it. We're talking to JD Wicker, he's the athletic director at San Diego State. Are San Diego State and Boise State a, a, a couple? Remember years ago, this is before you got to San Diego State, but San Diego State and Boise State were going to join the Big East together. So as we look at USC and UCLA joining the Big Ten together. And now there's this rumor today about, you know, North Carolina, Florida State, Clemson, and Virginia going to the SEC. I would have thought Duke and North Carolina were a couple. Are San Diego State and Boise State a, – a, is it both of you or, or, or is San Diego State just focusing on itself? I, I mean, and I was here for the – I was working for Jim Stark when we went to the, the Big East for the cup of coffee. Excuse me. Pardon me. Um, mm -hmm. So – not necessarily. I mean, I think, you know, one of the challenges that Boise State's going to see is they are a relatively young institution, as you think about four year institutions, um, and they're growing their academic, uh, their academic component. So uh, that may be something that holds them back from a Pac-12 type of thing. Right now, um, we're concentrating on San Diego State and, you know, 
making you know us the best that we can possibly be. Uh, we have certainly worked with Boise a lot since you know that Big East uh, move, and then as we've moved through the Mountain West conferences, you know the two most consistently successful uh, football programs for sure in the Mountain West uh, and basketball to a certain extent. Certainly had a lot of conversations with Kurt Apsey, who was the AD, who now actually works for San Diego State. Uh, and now Jeremiah Dickey, the athletic director up there. Uh, a lot of conversations, a lot of conversations last summer as we worked through the realignment when, you know, the, uh, the Texas and Oklahoma went to the SEC. A number of schools out of the, you know, moved up to the, out of the American Athletic uh, into the Big 12. And then, you know, there was some discussion of whether certain Mountain West Conference schools would go to the American or stay in the Mountain West. See, J.D., my main – this is a very general, open question for you. Where do you see the athletic department? <laughs> um, I see us in San Diego. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm... <laughs> I mean, again, it, you know, we – you have to be invited. I mean, that's the thing that I always tell people. And so we have to make ourselves – be the best version of ourselves that we can. And that's, you know, we're investing in football, uh, you know, to help that with the stadium. The stadium also benefits our soccer programs and our women's lacrosse program. They'll get to play there. Uh, and it also adds money to the bottom line of our budget. So every student athlete in our building will see benefit from the stadium. But what the outside world sees is they're, they're investing in football. And, you know, that's, you know, that's what writes the checks right now. You know, if you talk to a TV executive, They'll tell you that 80 to 85 percent of what they're paying a conference for their rights is football related. So if, you know, the Big Ten is going to make a billion dollars off of their next TV deal, 800 to 850 million of that's tied to football. So that's the most important thing we can do right now. And then just continue to have success at football, continue to have success at men's basketball, because uh, that's kind of the next piece that's out there publicly. Uh, you know, and keep beating Pac-12 teams. <laughs> and you guys have, and you guys have done that consistently. You've been the best football team and the best <laughs> basketball team. It's great that you preferenced that before this question. You've put so much work into these programs being successful on a national level as high as, as you possibly can. If you, at the end of the musical chairs that is happening as realignment, if you get, if if San Diego State gets left out of the realignment when the shuffle is over. What would that mean for the program? Yeah, I mean, we keep, you know, we keep doing what we're doing. Uh, we keep investing. I mean, we live in Southern California. We live in a recruiting hotbed. Uh, it's one of the greatest places in the world to live. We're the, you know, eighth largest city, 27th, I think, largest uh, DMA, which is how they measure television sets. So we're very attractive. Um, and we're doing the things that we need to do. So, I, you know, we'll keep, you know, putting the money into it uh, to continue, you know, being successful like we have been. We're fortunate that, you know, the new stadium is going to, you know, really one, do well for Aztec, you know, Aztec athletics for Aztec football. Uh, you know, we're going to sell out of our premium before the season starts. Season ticket sales are going well. And then we have a significant another, you know, number of other events that are going to generate revenue for us. Uh, and that helps us in the Viejas Arena again, is another great place where we're filling that building. We've got exciting, uh, you know, teams and, you know, we're working through NIL. We've done a really good job with NIL. It's not as, you know, flashy as maybe some other schools, but we've, you know, we've got all the pieces in place so that our student athletes can take care of their NIL. And, you know, that's an important piece as well. Kids want to play. You know, you're not going to stockpile all the recruits at Alabama or Texas or places like that because they want to get on the field to play. So we continue to be an attractive outlet. And, you know, I think we keep doing what we're doing. We'll, we will end up in the next best place, whatever the next iteration of the NCAA is. All right. We're talking to J.D. Wicker this afternoon, the athletic director at San Diego State. So, J.D., you said it just before, you know, you have to be invited, right? Like you, you're, you got to have the Pac-12 come invite you or you have to have the Big 12 come invite you. Um, I just wonder from your perspective and with all of your experience around college sports, if you could pick and choose, like where does San Diego state belong? What would you say? I mean, you know, I think the, the best thing for us is the West coast. Um, you know, you look up and down the West coast, we do the majority of our, 
recruiting in the west on the west coast and then you know texas is probably our next uh biggest area where we're doing recruiting but you think about time zones uh you know where the institution wants to recruit students from as well uh, and you look at the major um you know cities up and down you know the west coast that's where the pac-12 lives right now so that's not to say that you know being in the midwest and getting some better tv uh time slots getting into texas where we do a lot of recruiting already you know they both have their um you know they both have their benefits so i you know for us it's going to be most important is what gives us the most the best chance to be successful going forward and the best chance to be part of whatever the next iteration of the NCAA is. Yeah, because I think if I were in your shoes and somebody asked me the same question, like, what's the best place for you? My answer today would be, I'm not really sure yet, because <laughs> I don't know how this is all going to play out. Like, let me ask you this. Do you think, do you think, 100%, That's, so, so JD, do you look think different tomorrow. that other Pac-12 schools will wind up defecting to the Big Ten in particular? I, you know, I, I mean, I think... The, and it's been written pretty widely about, and you know, folks I've talked to, the next domino that has to fall is Notre Dame. Um, you know, when if and when Notre Dame decides to go to the Big Ten, or you know, they could go to the ACC since they already have a relationship there, that's the one that sets off the next domino of who's going where. Um, so. Could more teams out of the, you know, could USC and UCLA have said, hey, we're going to come to the Big Ten, and then, you know, when that next domino falls, we want you to create a, a West Coast division of the Big Ten? No, I have no idea if that was said, but, I mean, that could be because right now, you know, imagine those, you know, that UCLA softball team that wins national championships on a regular basis or, you know, the women's soccer program or whatever it may be that, they're, they're flying four to six hours every other week to go play games on the East Coast. That's not going to play real well um, long term, I don't think. So I would think they would hope for some regionalization uh, is, you know, potential moves continue to be made. But that's purely speculative on my side. I like the Big Ten West. I like that I mean, idea. If you had, think about that. If you had Washington, Oregon, good. Stanford, Cal, USC, <laughs> UCLA, San Diego State, Utah, I'm just thinking out loud here, JD, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess really for us, and I'm sure it's the same thing you've been hearing from everybody else. All we really care about is that San Diego State does not get left behind. And by the way, that's what we're thinking, but I guarantee you it's what everybody else is thinking around the country too. You know, I mean, you came from Georgia Tech. I, I, I'm a Pitt alum. We're, we're ACC schools. We don't want to get left behind. And that's yeah, the big concern. It's, I mean, you know, again, there's the, you, you just don't know at this point and what is the future hold. I mean, you know, one of the big things that, you know, kind of gets lost in all of the, you know, the realignment talk is, you know, there's still the transformation committee doing their work on what, you know, the NCAA looks back. There's a, um, a case in the third circuit called the Johnson versus NCAA case. That's a minimum wage case where student athletes are suing that they should be paid minimum wage which would create basically student workers, not employees, but, you know, a kid, you know, the, the, the student that works in the library or, you know, taking tickets, those types of things uh, that's out there that, you know, that's a scary case. And then you've got, um, you know, Ramogi Huma up in LA, who's got a national labor relations board, uh, you know, case filed against USC, UCLA, the Pac-12, I don't know if he'll have to change it down to the Big Ten, but it's the Pac-12 now and then the NCAA, you know, trying to create um, employees out of student athletes, which if that happens, then that changes, you know, that really changes the calculus of what, you know, the NCAA looks like. Hmm. Man, this is a crazy time in your business, pal. It is interesting. Gosh, <laughs> I mean, you've got a lot going on. I think I got a lot. Hey, I'm busy, man. How are you stadium. handing out stadium tours then? What do you, I mean, yeah, we got, we got 30 seconds to go. <laughs> JD, how do we, who do we have to know to go well, down just, there and tour with you and put on hard hats and take pictures? Well, I just assume you had all the renderings that Alex had in his book and it was like you were interested. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. That's that a good book, one. you. Yeah, you you that I, I it's gonna be like a five volume set at this point with all the sports yeah, arena. Well, I always now. promised that if we open the stadium, you could and you printed that book, you could have your book signing at the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice! 
<laughs> Jay, awesome. got a roll. We really appreciate you visiting with us and spending this time. I know everybody listening really, really appreciates it. Everybody watching does as well. Thank you so much. Hey, to all the 1090 listeners, I just want to say we're out of here. Okay. Uh, for everybody else, we'll have a separate ending for you. And we're back tomorrow, radio listeners. Peace out. I just want to say thank you for doing this. Yeah, this was really, absolutely. really cool. Um, I thought the picture of you and Kevin O'Connell was great. Uh, having a, a San Diego State alum become an NFL head coach this early yeah. in his career is fantastic. And, um, man, the stadium just looks so great. I mean, I remember you coming with renderings to 1090. And <laughs> look what you've done, man. You brought this thing to life. Congratulations. You deserve to be uh, – I mean, everybody should really be celebrating the accomplishments of the San Diego State Athletic Department. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. It's um, it, it will be – I mean, people aren't going to – until you've been in the stadium and just see how intimate it's going to be, you know, Kevin and I were talking about it yesterday, literally on the west side of the building, like the last, if you remember the old, you know, at SDCCU, how that first level of seats just went on forever. Mm -hmm. The current stadium, basically outside of, you know, four or five rows on the west side and maybe half of the upper deck on the east side sits inside that. So, I mean, you're going to be so wow. much closer to the field. It's very intimate. It's mm. very vertical. And then all the social spaces we've created, it, it it will be a lot of fun. It will be finally what we all who have been San Diego State football supporters for years have always dreamt of, which is create an environment. There yeah. should be a sound and a feel and a look and a smell that everything says college football. But yeah. it was always so hard to create that in an NFL stadium. Couldn't. You know, yeah. right. I mean, Couldn't do it. The only time we may have had a home field advantage was that Stanford game when we had the blackout. That was the only time I ever felt like we had a crowd that made a difference. Yeah, yeah. Listen, you're going to get a statue. You get this team into the Pac-12 or the Big 12, you're going to get a statue. You got the stadium done. You get this team in the pack, fill in the blank. You're going to be the man, baby. You're going to name a wing after you. Yeah, I don't need any statues. Just uh, just keep our head down and keep doing what we're doing. That's, that's yeah. what got us to this point. Right on, We'll put man. you in Alex's book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you maybe you, you can write, write it forward yeah exactly exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice yeah no i'll put you in the i'll put you yeah, in the yeah. conclusion and be like this is what yeah. happens when you get things done yeah, like yeah, this was possibly it was yeah coming. yeah uh we're looking forward to those surprises hey jd we uh we definitely will be in touch we would love to get a tour i don't know if it's possible before the stadium uh, really opens but seriously great job man thank you so much for the time today and uh congratulations on all your success all right. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, we, we can work on something. All right, man. Awesome. All right. Hey, everybody, we got to go. Peace out. We're back tomorrow. Thanks, Have a great afternoon, everybody.